Hi, this is Roger Moore, and you're listening to James Bond Radio. Hello, and welcome to episode number 199 of James Bond Radio. It is, of course, the big 2020 Boxing Day JBR quiz. And look at Chris there. He's joining me, obviously, along with me. My name is Tom Sears. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm joined by Chris Wright. How are you doing, Chris? I'm not too bad. And I'm joined by six fellas here, all, yeah. all ready for a, a JBR quiz as well. The old Bonds behind me. You've got Bondy and Baubles hanging behind you, man, which is a <laughs> yeah. beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah. So, man, big, big uh, Christmas uh, Boxing Day quiz. So last year, we, you'll uh, everybody at home will remember, we did it mastermind style. So we had three listeners come on and... Uh, you know, if years come by, it would be me versus you and I would always lose. And I <laughs> no, thought, no, rather no. than humiliate myself again, let's let the listeners humiliate themselves. So we had the mastermind, <laughs> of course, won by Marlena last year, oh, reigning well champion. well done, Marlena. Um, and we have three new contestants coming on this year in the shape of Linda Zhu, who people remember from the uh, 30 Days of Spectre days. Um, that was the last time she came on JBR, so that's five years ago craziness we have hunter brining all the way from texas and we have ryan capassi all the way from uh, from la i've been saying his name wrong capassi is what i've been saying so i apologize to to ryan for that but uh, there we go so man are you looking forward to uh, getting involved with a bit of quizzing yeah totally obviously um unfortunately i missed out last year but i'm all all up for it this year i'm really excited actually i know the format there's a couple of new little things this year, which uh, are we going to tell the listeners now, or, or should we wait for the actual? Well, I suppose quiz? we will. We will leave it. We'll, I suppose we'll do a little bit in the sense yeah. that usually for the people playing at home, this is very important. So usually we have ten. We have a hundred questions, ten rounds of ten, um, and they follow the usual format. We've got you know the Sean Connery round, the Lazenby round, the Roger round, and so on through all the bonds. There's a Fleming round. There's a music round as usual. But we've got a couple of new rounds. Um, and this year Marlena, our reigning champion, has come back with 10 of our own questions. She's going to kick off proceedings with the champions round, um, and then we have a sounds round from uh, from good old uh, Rory Cooper as well, from his, uh, him and man, John Ward have been doing that. He's pretty their, good at doing those, the he old is, uh, sound edit quizzes. They've been pretty doing tough their, as far as I remember. <laughs> that's right, they've been doing their Friday JBR quizzes um, uh, through all lockdown and stuff like that, so uh, we, we got them to come up with some some sound related questions for us which is going to be very very tricky now obviously we're recording this just before christmas so what do you think you might be getting in your stocking this year chris oh i don't know um what 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 do i be getting what would i want there is a book um like the trouble is with bond there's so many books that come out and you think right do i want everything and ultimately yes you do Mm. But there are some Bond books that you read once and there's no need to read them again. And there are others that you can pour your over all the time. On the Tracks yeah. is a good one. Yeah. On the Tracks, I could I could read it so much. And, and and there are a number number of Bond books like that. And there's one that I'm interested in, which is from a small section of a brilliant Bond film. And I'm not sure if it's one that you've heard, but it's, a, it's to do with the um, car chase sequence in Goldfinger. And there's a whole book on it. Oh. Um, and and with loads of unseen photographs and stuff like that, um, so that is one that I have written to Father Christmas. Um, so if I've been a good boy, hopefully that will turn up. Um, but no doubt I'll probably get eight lots of Bond seen it from people. You know, loads loads of Bond socks or something yeah. like that. I don't know. That no. good to me. Um, I I honestly don't know. It's it's just been a strange year, man. So so Hasn't I think it? it's going to be a strange Christmas. It's going to be just. It's just the strangeness is going to continue. So all in all, I just want to have have a have a nice time if I can with family and certainly with uh, with uh, my better half. And uh, and that's the most important thing in life at the moment. And there you go, mate. We don't need all this materialism, do we? We just need <laughs> love and family around us. Exactly. We? And if we have a Bond Funko Pop as well, there we go. It's a bonus, isn't that it? Would be, that would be nice indeed. I'll tell you what's in my stocking on my list. I've written off to Father Christmas. and uh, Can I on, hazard a guess? Is it then. is it the James Bond hero PPK from Goldeneye that recently <laughs> went on auction? <laughs> for oh 37 and a half K. Dude, so still didn't I watched that and you were watching it live, weren't you? For yeah. the, the prop store did a Bond auction, uh, must be a few weeks ago now. 
and they had loads of good stuff on there, man. They had gold uh, Pierce's PPK from Goldeneye. That was my number one thing. Yeah. They had his AK-47 from the archive sequence, which I learned was also used by Daniel Craig in Tomb Raider. He apparently oh, held that. But here's my question is, how do they know that's exactly the same one? Because I imagine they've got a rack of AKs. And it's they, like, how do you know it's that yeah. same one? You know what I, I mean? guess if it's if it's a, a hero gun, then it'll probably be recorded as such. I'm sure they have sort of um, codes um, on the gun somewhere um, because they have to keep a record of them all. So there must be some sort of uh, coding okay. system. Otherwise, you won't know that if they go me, missing or yeah, something like that. That makes so, me feel a bit better. Yeah. So yeah, so they had the AK, um, which didn't go for that much. That I think, if I remember right, that went for like six or seven grand, six which isn't grand. that yeah. much, is it? No. They had Honey's Shell, which I was oh, eyeballing. See, because I, the, was, the, I was the, eyeballing that because yeah. initially the the early starting price on it was next to nothing. I was like, yeah. well, it's going to go for more, but I, I'm I'm going to watch this. Yeah, because it um, said the guide yeah. the guide price, the estimated price that they thought it was going to go for was something like eight hundred pounds, and I was yeah. like, well, you you can't like, not buy that. If for it's, a piece if it, of yeah. Bond history, for the such, first Bond yeah, film, and there's hardly I mean, anything from Doctor No these days, exactly. and it's the actual Honey Rider shell, yeah. and it came with a few photos as well, didn't it? Yeah, or something? yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I thought, if it goes that cheap, man, I, I'm going to have to jump in. But then, of course, that's probably what yeah. everybody else was thinking. I can't yeah. remember how much that went for in the end, but it was I enough that, that I was like, ah, a good, f- a good few grand yeah. in the end, like, yeah. Um, but then Pierce's PPK, man, I've made a decision to myself that. One day I will own that. Yeah. It's like Wayne's World, man. With the guitar. <laughs> One day that will be mine. And I just, yeah. I, if it's 30 years from now, I will have that on my shelf. I was surprised treasure. actually that you didn't have a look at old uh, Brosnan shirt from Tomorrow Never Dies. You know, that shirt he wears from a lot of the films actually. The blue one, He's wearing it? that for yeah. all of the um, sort of Thailand uh, sections, yeah. um, obviously the Vietnam sections. Um, I, get, I reckon if he had worn that in Goldeneye, you would have been all over oh, that, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But there was that. And the, the other one I thought was interesting that I had my eye on, I wasn't going to get it, but was the harpoon that Timmy uses oh, yeah. to shoot the geezer that kills Sharky. And, and it's I the thought, same one that he used for the barefoot, was it, or not? Or uh, was it? Or not? I, all I know, it was... I, oh, I'm, no, the I'm, one I'm, that I think him. it was the one that kills yeah. that dude. And I thought to myself, that would be... like The, the things I'd wanted to own... Is like, you know, like, the, for example, they might have like a, a, a casino chip from Casino Royale, yeah. obviously. And I thought that would be a cool thing to have. But I want the one that I can see it on screen. Do you know what I mean? I want, yeah. I don't want it to be, I don't want to look at that and be like, oh, one of my chips is in that pile somewhere. Yeah. I want to be yeah. like, that thing he's got in his hand there is sitting on my shelf. That's what I want. And I'll prove it because I've yeah. dusted it and it's got Daniel Craig's fingerprints on it. There you go. <laughs> exactly that, you know. So I thought Timmy's harpoon would have been a great one. And you know yeah. what? It didn't even sell. The reserve price on that was two grand. And nobody bought it. And I thought, really? that's, that's bananas. Yeah. I thought that would have gone. Yeah, but um, because there, there it is. There's there it is. You can see him shoot the dude with it. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I I sat there and watched that for hours. That and they had some great <laughs> stuff, didn't they, man? They had all yeah. sorts of oh, like, yeah. Indiana Jones stuff and loads of Bond going. But for me, that that star piece yeah. was the Brosnan. And I don't think the PBK sold in the end because it didn't no. hit the reserve price. I think they wanted like sixty or seventy. I think it was fifty. It. Was the earliest that they would let it go for was right. 50, 50k. Yeah, and I, I think, think it went which for is a, 40, Which is a chunk yeah. of change. Of course it is, yeah. But then there are people out there with big chunks of change on there. Absolutely, so, yeah, 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 big time. But yeah, one day, man, that will be mine. Now, speaking <laughs> of Bond and Indiana Jones, there's yes. a, there's a, well, there's, I didn't say what was going in my Christmas stocking, did I? My number one request, which I would have ordinarily got for myself, but I know, uh, you know, Father Christmas is, is, hopefully bringing it for me which is of course the lost adventures of james bond that Ooh, book, the, the nice. lost timmy films and all the rest of it that's a book i've wanted somebody to write for donkey's years because i find that so fascinating the things that nearly happened and didn't yeah. so as you're listening to this i will know whether i have that book and if i don't have Ooh. it in my stocking i'm just going to order it anyway but oh. if it is then i'll be very happy nice. um, and if you listening at home don't have that book then sort yourself out because you need it um, now the other thing is i discovered a new book the other day uh i was in a place called siren sester in the cotswolds and yeah. i popped into lovely into, place, actually, it is Sirencester. lovely yeah. um and i popped into waterstones had a little browse and i see this book poking out at me from the from the shelves and on the top of it it says james bond meets indiana jones a rip roaring adventure 
So I immediately think, well, I'm sold immediately based on that. Thank you very much. And the book is called The War in the Dark by Nick Sedgefield. There's the cover there. Ooh, okay, right. looking good. Yeah. Um, and I thought to myself, I have a little test. I do a lot of reading these days. And I thought, I, I have a little test with myself because in years gone by, I would always feel like I needed to finish a book, even if I wasn't really enjoying it. I might get 200 pages and be like, oh, this is a bit of a slog, but I've got to finish it before I move on to the next one. I don't do that anymore because life is too short. There's too many right. good books out there to waste it on one you're not enjoying. So I have a little test. I go in a bookshop and I'm like, right, does the first line get me? Is it a nice first line? That's good. Now, if it passes that test, the first page, is that good? Okay, yeah, I'm still hooked. So then if it does that, I'm like, all right, I'll get that and I'll take it home. Then when the time comes to read, my test is, how are the first 50 pages? Am I still enjoying myself at 50 pages? Do I continue? Yep, I do. Uh, good, right? 100 pages. If it passes the 100 pages mark and I'm still gunning on all, all cylinders, that's it. I, I generally, 99 times out of 100, I, I will finish the book. Mm. Um, so that's my little yardstick. And if, if I read a book and I get to a page 50 and I'm like, ah, I'm just not feeling this, maybe I'll be like, let's push to 100 and see what happens. And if I'm still not feeling it by 100, it goes back on the shelf and I do something else right yeah and i pick this book up and i open it up and uh what's the opening line have you got the opening well line for us? this is what i'm about to oh, read to you I, i've got the nice. hard copy at home but it, chapter one october 1963 christopher winter had never put a bullet in the head of a priest before the idea felt faintly blasphemous and i thought that's such a cheeky opening yeah. line man that's brilliant that good. i really that like really that good. and basically what it is is it's it's a nice little blend of bond stuff right written by a bond fan by nick sedgefield so he's a bond geek um and it's like crossing 60s bond cold war bond with like you know how indiana jones goes a bit sort of like into a little bit of horror in temple of doom and a bit supernatural yeah. It's like that. And you know Call of Cthulhu, those old um, Lovecraft books where it's oh, yeah, like yeah. set in the real world, but it goes a bit supernatural. So it's like that. It's like a crossover. It's a bit Bond. It's a bit Indiana Jonesy with a little sort of bit of horror thrown in there as well. Sounds pretty cool. And it's great, man. I literally ripped through that book in like two or three days. And I've um, I've already bought the sequel, which is called The Spider Dance. And I'm about halfway through that already. That's a good thoroughly title. enjoying that. But do you know what I really like about it? Because... I learned that the, the author is a, is a Bond fan. You know how we would all do things if we were making films or writing books. Yeah. We would slide little Bondian references in there and trying to be under the radar just so just super geeks would get it. And this book is full of them. Man. Really? There are so many things where I, I was reading, I was like, oh, that's so cheeky. That's so just a slight little stuff, not banging you over the head with it, a subtle, slight little bit of a Bond reference that you would only get if you were a super geek. Um, so yeah, I challenged the people at home. If you, if that sounds like it's up your street, get yourself a copy of the war in the dark by Nick Sedgefield and see how many bond little nods that you can spot in there. Cause there are, there are several and, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I yeah. think I've got a new addition to my Christmas list. Well, there you go, mate. Yeah. yeah. Well, as, as this is going out, this is after Christmas. Oh, so it you is. could, you could like incept I yourself. I could have it already. I could be reading it right it now. That's it. Who knows? But yeah, man, the war in the dark by Nick Sedgefield, get it. And then. When you finish it, you will also want to read the sequel straight away to get the spider dance as well. Is it worth um, getting in touch with him? Getting a bit of Bond? Yeah, absolutely. I, I see he's not? he's published a, a book about Bond as well, a non-fiction book about Bond. So uh, so yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's it's definitely worth doing. We will we will investigate some Setchfield in the future for sure. Cool. Sounds good. Coolio. All right then, man. Right. So should we crack on with this quiz then? Definitely. Let's get it. We've got three new people this year. Um, and yeah, I know, I'm just excited, man. I, th I can't wait to get through all the rounds. And obviously, it'd be great to get Marlena back for doing the champions round as well. And I think that's that's you know that's the right way to do things, yeah, definitely. Yeah, big time. Yeah, cool stuff. All right then. So without any further ado, everybody at home, get your pens and papers at the ready, and uh, let's get cracking with the 2020 JBR Big Boxing Day Bondian Quiz. I think it's the 007th if I'm doing my counting right, which is bananas Could crazy. Be right. But let's get some theme tune on the go and let's have it. My name's Bond. James Bond. Bond. James. Bond, what do you think you're doing? Keeping the British hand up, sir. Welcome to James Bond Radio. News, reviews, and discussion of all things 007. You see, as you can see, I have no problem with female authority. Oh, thank 
Okay, so here we are, the Boxing Day JBR Quiz 2020 with our three brave contestants and a returning champion as well. So it would be rude not to start with our returning champion, which is, of course, Marlena Orth. Marlena, how are you doing, my darling? I'm very well, thank you. How are you, Tom? I'm very well. How does it feel to be the reigning JBR Boxing Day Quiz champion? It feels great. It feels even better to be on this side of the quiz this <laughs> year and not having to answer any questions. <laughs> Indeed. So for the listeners at home, Marlena has come back with 10 champions questions that she's going to pose to our other contestants. And uh, so how has it changed your life being the reigning champion, Marlena? <laughs> People recognize you in the streets, stuff like that. Yeah. So you have to keep yeah. giving autographs. It's really yeah. something you need to consider before you throw your hat in the ring here. Absolutely. Good stuff. <laughs> uh, and where are you Where are you calling from today, Marlene? Are you, are you literally on James Bond Island like your background suggests or are you somewhere else? I wish I was. No, this is actually in Germany. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so I'm at my parents' place in Germany just oh, now for Christmas. Nice. Good stuff. All right, Chris, do you want to introduce yes. our brave contestants for this year? I will indeed. Okay, we have three fantastic contestants for this year's JBR Boxing Day quiz. And we'll start with Mr. Hunter Brenning. How are you doing, Hunter? And welcome to uh, the quiz. I'm doing great, Chris. Super happy to be here. Uh, let's, uh, let's bang it up pretty good today. And where about you calling from, Hunter? Station T, Texas. It's still stupid hot here. We're in shorts every day. Not much of a Christmas season over here. <laughs> Well, are you feeling lucky? How are you feeling about the quiz? Are you confident? Are you a bit nervous? What, what, what are you thinking? I'm feeling cautiously optimistic. Uh, I know as soon as, you know, we get that, you know, head and seat, you know, your head just, your seat and butt, just, head just goes right out your butt. So, I don't know. I'm feeling good. But when those questions roll, we'll, we'll see how I'm feeling then. I see. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Okay, next up we have is Ryan Capici. Is that how you pronounce your surname, Ryan? Capacity. Capacity, there we go. Oh, I've got uh, that wrong as well. I've been calling you Capacity. <laughs> Shit, sorry, dude. Capacity. We apologize. Right. <laughs> and where about you calling from, Ryan? I'm calling from Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Okay, and what's the confidence levels like with you today? Well, I don't know how the tri- or the, the quiz is going to go, but uh, Linda, Hunter, Marlena, and Tom and Chris, I'm thrilled to be here with you guys. Oh, Absolutely. That's great. Nice one. Good stuff, Ryan. Well, it's a pleasure to have you all here. And the final contestant is a name that I'm sure a lot of listeners will recognise. It is, of course, Linda Zhu from Station V, Vancouver. How are you, Linda? Been a long time. It has. It's been a long time. I think the last time I was on was right after Spectre. Wow. So it's been um, about five years. Um, but yeah, I'm much like everyone else. I'm, I'm happy, but I'm really nervous. Um, yeah. Well, I hope you spent the last five years swatting up for this uh, JBR Boxing Day quiz. I'm sure that's been the case. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. This is the this is, it's all downhill from here, you know. This is this is the high point of my life. <laughs> Linda told me beforehand she's been revising and memorizing every color tie that Roger Moore has ever worn on screen. So she's going yeah. she's going deep. See, she's the one to watch. You'd see the wall here. It's just all pictures of Roger's ties and nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Hunter, did we pronounce your name wrong? Is it Brinning or Brining? It's Brining. 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 All right, cool. We're all good now. Good we're, we're, we're we're cooking. All right then, so should we get cracking, everybody? Should we start with the champions round? Are you ready to 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 test your metal with Marlena's questions, everybody? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready. Ready. All right, let's do it. Are you ready, Marlena? Yep. Let's do it then. Kicking off the Boxing Day JBR Quiz 2020 with the champions round starring Marlena. Let's go for it, Marlena. Take it away. All right, question number one. Nice and easy one to get us started. In From Russia with Love, Bond and Karen Bay are dinner guests at the gypsy camp. Karen tells Bond they've come at a bad day because two women are both in love with the chief's son and are about to, to fight to the death or until one of them surrenders. What are the two gypsy women's names? That's the easy part. <laughs> uh, yikes. Um, just, just to... Uh ask this point across is there a point for each one or only one point if you get both how, how are we working with it this year i think a point for each one i think it's, yeah. it's fair isn't it yeah That's, let's yeah. do that any any answers that require more than one answer it'll be a point per answer i think that's the fairest way to go sounds good to me okay brilliant 
Does that mean there's more of those Chris Wright questions where it's like, which 10 movies feature this? <laughs> I, I've been really good this year, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> no list questions at all. All right, let's have uh, question number two then. All right. Question number two. In 2006 Casino Royale, Bond and Le Chiffre face off in a game of Texas Hold'em poker. But in the book Casino Royale, they play what? Hope spelling doesn't count. <laughs> this is where we see who's a real gambler out of the three of them. Very nice. So uh, let's just hear that question one more time then for the people at home, Marlene. Mm -hmm. In 2006 Casino Royale, Bond and Le Chiffre face off in a game of Texas Hold'em poker. But in the book Casino Royale, they play what? Okay, good stuff. Everybody's answers are in. Nice. Question number three. All right. Question number three. In License to Kill, what is the number people can call during Professor Joe's television broadcast to make a donation? <laughs> oh, oh, my wow. God. <laughs> Marlena, you're being very harsh here. <laughs> so, oh, I was just... actually just thinking on that question. Maybe we can give people a hint. It's a seven character code, I guess, and it's three digits and four letters you get helps i'm just going to read it out again in license to kill what is the number people can call during professor joe's television broadcast to make a donation tom i think you'll appreciate my answer on that one okay very nice <laughs> okay Everybody's answers are in. Next question, please, okay. Marlena. Question number four. In For Your Eyes Only, M asks how deep the water is where the St. George's sank. What is the response? Question four. In For Your Eyes Only, M asks how deep the water is where the St. George's sank. What is the response? This might be a trick question because I don't think M is in For Your Eyes Only. Yeah, Tanner. <laughs> Oh. Oh. oh, the champion! Oh, <laughs> you, you passed my test, Chris Mary. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I think everyone should get a point for that. <laughs> no, it's a good one. The answer uh, she was looking for is nothing because M's not in the film. That was the yeah. answer she was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Oh, okay. We've got. All right, cool. Some people are on the on the ball in here today. I'm I'm pleased to say. All right, cool. Next question. Good. So we're on um, five. Who sees himself as the next Iron Man of Russia? Vladimir Putin. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Who else? See oh, he already is, isn't he? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> so question five. Who sees himself as the next Iron Man of Russia? These are good questions, Marlena. Oh, I'm glad you like them. <laughs> Curious, okay. I'm trying to spell phonetically for you, Tom, so you can translate my... Thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's a beauty. <laughs> that is a beauty. I wish the people at home could see my little chat box there. All right, beautiful. Next question, question number six. Okay. Question number six. In Diamonds Are Forever, when M lectures bond on diamonds... What diamond is prominently featured in the display case? Oh. Question six. In Diamonds Are Forever, when M lectures bond on diamonds, what diamond is prominently featured in the display case? That's M in this movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excellent. All answers are in. Next question, please, Marlena. All right, question seven. In Dr. No, what is the Strangway's secretary's blood type? And anyone who knows me well, it's the same as mine. <laughs> it's the same as mine too, actually. Is it? <laughs> sure, I don't even know what my blood type is. I should find that out. I was so excited when I found out that was my blood type. I was like, yeah, come on. <laughs> oh, I think you just gave me a big hint. Thanks, Chris. That's all right. You're welcome, Hunter. <laughs> All right, all the answers are in. Next okay. question. 
Question eight. In Goldfinger, how much does Colonel Smithers say one of the gold bullions is worth? These are good. So in Goldfinger, how much does Colonel Smithers say one of the gold bullions is worth? Okay, good stuff. All the answers are in there. Next question, penultimate question in the Marlena round. <laughs> question nine. In The World's Not Enough, how many minutes does Bond say there's left until the bomb in the pipeline will hit the oil terminal? That's so hard. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Mylene is doing her best to make sure nobody wins this year so she retains her title. By <laughs> I would never. <laughs> okay, all the answers are in. So, question number 10 mm -hmm. from Mylene, last one. All right, question 10. In From Your Eyes Only, when Bond meets up with Q, who has disguised himself as a priest, how many sincerals does Q say they've managed to locate in Greece so far? Wow. See, this is the thing, oh. right? I like to think I know quite a bit about James Bond, uh, but even I would be absolutely screwed with most of these questions. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I reckon you'd still get him there, wouldn't you? Not, not all of them. Definitely not. No, there's a few absolute bangers in there. Um, okay, yeah. Let's see. I will admit myself on this one. So when I was tasked to come up with questions, I thought that would be a really cool question, and then I rewatched the movie just to make sure I was embarrassing myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right then. So that is the first round done. Ten questions in the bag. So Marlene, if you would like to go back to the beginning and restate the question one by one, questions one by one, and then give us the answer. And then I will tot up, I'm going to look back through the chat there from our contestants, and I'm going to tot up the scores as you go, okay? So, when you're ready. Mm -hmm. All right, so question one was, in From Russia With Love, Bond and Karen Bay are dinner guests at the gypsy camp. Karen tells Bond they've come at a bad day because two women are both in love with the chief's son and are about to fight to the death or until one of them surrenders. What are the two gypsy women's names? And their names are Vida and Zora. Okay, hmm? So question two was, in 2006 Casino Royale, Bond and Le Chiffre face off in a game of Texas Hold'em poker, but in the book Casino Royale, they play what? And the answer was Baccarat. Very nice. Now, mm -hmm. what's the deal with Baccarat and Shaman de Fer? Is that the same thing? No, slight different. The slight difference is with baccarat, you play against the bank, so you've got someone that's a bank that holds it. Whereas in Chemin de Fer, one of the opposition is the bank. So okay. baccarat, you're playing against a house. Chemin de Fer, you're playing against your opponent. All right, cool. So it's mainly yeah. Chemin de Fer rather than baccarat, but in the novel, I'm not sure. Okay, so the answer we're going with is baccarat. Is that right? Either or, I think, is right. Yeah. Either or. Yeah. Okay. In that case. That's good. All right. Next one. Okay. Uh, question three was, in License to Kill, what is the number people can call during Professor Joe's television broadcast to make a donation? And the answer was 555-LOVE. So 555-L-O-V-E. Bless your heart. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Next one. Mm -hmm. When you're ready. And in for your eyes only. So Tanner asks... How deep, how deep the water is where the St. George is saying. And the response was, not deep enough, I'm afraid. Beautiful. All right, good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, then the next question was, who sees himself as the next Iron Man of Russia? And besides Vladimir Putin, we were looking for General Oromov from Goldeneye. Very good. Everybody, everybody did well on that question, must be said. <laughs> good. Um, then the next one was, in Diamonds Are Forever, when M lectures Bond on diamonds, what diamond is prominently featured in the display case? And I think it's mentioned in the dialogue as well. It's the Star of South Africa. Very nice. Okay. Next up. 
All right. And then the next one, what are Strangway secretaries and Chris's blood type? <laughs> and the answer <laughs> to that is O positive. Cool. Okay. We've got a lot of close answers there, but nobody uh, nobody nailed it, sadly. On that ORH positive question. counts as well, if anyone wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Mm -hmm. Next one was, in Goldfinger, how much does Colonel Smithers say one of the gold bullions is worth? And that was £5,000. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. And then in, in The World's Not Enough, how many minutes does Bond say there is left until the bomb in the pipeline will hit the oil terminal? Um, and he calculates it to be 78 minutes. Quick at math, isn't he? He's, He's so very clever as our Bond, isn't he? <laughs> All right, cool. And uh, next one. Mm -hmm. And final one. In For Yours Only, when Bond meets up with Q, who has disguised himself as a priest, how many St. Cyril's does Q say they've managed to locate in Greece so far? I'll admit that was a bit of a mean one. And it was 439 St. Cyril's in Greece. Do, do we give a point if they're within like, like 10 or within maybe 20 or something like that? What do we think? <laughs> Fifth, within 50? <laughs> 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 all right cool not a bad round from everybody okay so there's there is a somebody's pulling into the lead somebody's in the middle and somebody's trailing behind very slightly that's all i'm going to say at this point i'm not going to show you who it is i, mean, I would like to argue point. for uh the diamond that akbar shah should count for half a point what do you say to that world champion marlena <laughs> <World> <laughs> <laughs> For half a point. Yeah, it's Christmas. You can have yeah, half a point. If you don't ask, Hunter, you never get. So nice exactly. and Amen. I will adjust those points. Okay. There we go then. All right. So, Marlena, thank you for joining us. It was wonderful to see your face again. You're always a ray of sunshine when you when you pop up on JBR. And it was an honor to have you back to uh, knock out a champion's round of questions. Thank you very much for having me back. Linda, Hunter, Ryan, best of luck with the rest of the questions. And I look forward to, to guessing the, the other 90 on Christmas Day myself. Auf Wiedersehen. Right. Thanks. Bye. Oh, <laughs> see you, Marlena. Bye. Cool. We will see you soon, Marlena. Merry Christmas. Hope she's too late. All right. Okay. Good stuff. Now we're going to move on to the next round, which is what, Chris? What's the next round? It is, of course, Mr. Sir Sean Connery round. Okay. Very nice indeed. So the next 10 questions are all going to be Connery related questions. Okay. So, Chris, why don't you keep Yes. Up? Okay. So, question number one. Everyone ready? Sean Connery round. Here it is. Which Spectre agent was electrocuted during the Spectre meeting in Thunderball? So I'll say that again. Which Spectre agent was electrocuted during the Spectre meeting in Thunderball? Mm -hmm. Answers in. Good stuff. Answers are all yeah. in. Okay, on to question two. According to Bond in Never Say Never Again, who gave him the greatest pleasure of his life? <laughs> okay, I'll say that another time. Question two. According to Bond in Never Say Never Again, who gave him the greatest pleasure of his life? Do you want to do the next couple, Tommy? Yes, I do indeed. I'm just totting up the answers as we go. Okay, very nice. That's good. Yes, okay, wicked. All right, question number three. What is the final line in Diamonds Are Forever? That question again is, what is the final line in Diamonds Are Forever? Somebody's on the ball there. I like that. Okay, we're just waiting for an answer from Mr. Brining, or Commander Brining, as I like to call him. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay. Now, Chris, let me ask you yes. this, man. How strict are we in being exactly on topic with the exact line? So if it's a long line with a lot of words, 
Yeah. How I, do we I, play that? I think if it's if it's almost there, then then we've got to give them something. But Pat, if if it's a full mark for it on the point, I think definitely a half mark for almost there, but not quite. Okay, that makes yeah. sense to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay, so okay, let me just uh, come up with a little something that I can do that looks like a half mark. We'll do one of those. Okay, splendid. Okay, next question. Then question number four. What's the next line? Now this is. <laughs> I've got to do my Connery accent. Now, I know the man has recently left us, so please don't be offended, anybody, because my Connery accent is terrible. <laughs> but here it is. Now, this, I'm going to give you a, a half clue. Right? This is from Dr. No. Okay? <clears throat> What's the next line? You're a power source, had our organization puzzled for some time. Now, that was not Fat Bastard from Austin Powers. That was Sean Connery's <laughs> bond. Okay? I'll try it a little bit smoother. Your power source had our organization puzzled for some time. <laughs> that the, sounded our, like Renard. <laughs> our Scottish listeners are just turning off in their thousands now. Paul Jameson, you know, the rest of them. Okay. That was a good impression, Tom. Thanks, man. Yeah. You get an extra mark for being nice, Ryan. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Answers in for that one, Tom? Uh, we were just Not waiting quite. for Commander Brining. Okay. Now, that's a tough one because that's that's not a, a a common line that a lot of people quote. So you've got to you've got to really pay attention to Doctor. And, and again, half mark if if it's almost there but not quite. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Chris, when you're ready, mate, yep. next questions. Okay, on the question five. Now, there are two uh, potential points you can get for this one. In Doctor No, what were Bond and Honey's initial Geiger readings after they were captured on Crab Key? So you get oh, a uh-huh. point for Bond and a point for Honey. What were Bond? These are murder. These are really hard, yeah. What were Bond and Honey's Geiger readings after they were captured on Crab Key? I can't... I, I'm... I think I okay. So if you get them, you get a, a point for each if you nail it. I think if you're within five, you get a half mark for each. So if you're within five on one of them, that's a half mark. If you're in within five on both, that's one mark, and so on. Just see what we've got doing. Okay. Is that all in? That is a devilish, devilishly tricky that question. Is. That's a Jack all Uber in. question, that one. So you yeah. can blame him for that. He's got another one coming up, but I think Commander Brining might be a fan of this one. How many carrots rough is the Akbar Shah? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> That's how many carrots rough is the Akbar Shah? Okay. I wonder how everybody at home is doing. Are they following hmm. along? Whether they're doing all right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Answers are in for that one. Next question, Chris. Okay. Uh, well, it's uh, you can do the next two if you like, Tommy. Or oh, have I done? Yeah. Have, I, have we? Oh yeah. No, yeah. hold on. You're doing. Hold on. Oh, yeah. That's me. Sorry. <laughs> fuck, you know. All right. Question number seven. <laughs> this is a, a, a Brian Dobson question. In what year was Sean Connery knighted? You guys. You guys are tough. Uh, Do we get a half? I think we should give a half mark if they're, if they're a year either side. Yeah, that makes sense. A full mark, bang on. Half a mark yeah. for a year either side. Quarter mark for the decade? <laughs> okay good stuff answers are all in next question uh question number eight 
For a decade, between 1992 and 2002, Sean Connery owned a film company that was named after the area of Edinburgh in which he grew up. What was the name of that company? Now, there's a clue there. If you know your Connery history, you, you know the name of the place he grew up in. And Chris, you visited it recently, didn't I you? I did. And there's a lovely blue plaque. Um, and it's, yeah, I think if, if you know that, then, then you're on the right track, shall we say. So if you can access those memory banks, because I'm sure Connery's, you know, hometown is in those memory banks somewhere, and that will get you to the answer. It's a tricky one. Brian's gone Brian's gone real world Bond, hasn't he, in these two questions? He's, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's not within Bondian universe. He's, he's Bond-related outside. All right, we've had two passes. We're waiting for... There you go, Tom. Hey, very nice. Good <laughs> knowledge. Righty ho. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. All right, Chris. Okay, so know? we're on to question nine of the Connery round. Which character has been played on screen by both Sean Connery and his son, Jason Connery? So which character has been played on screen by both Sean and Jason Connery? I think this is a Dan Gale question, is that, that right? That is a Dan Gale question. And I tell you what, that would be more obvious to our British listeners, wouldn't that, it? Yes, it certainly would. Because the, 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 the Jason Connery portion was a TV show that I'm guessing probably never made it to the States. So that's a tricky one. Yeah. So, so I'll tell you what. There it, that it, it might be a British character. Yeah. yeah. And I will say, a, a, let's give him a little clue. Let's say a, a sort of a, a legendary character. Legendary British character. Yeah. Okay, we're waiting for one more answer to come in. Okay. All good? Yep. Okay, now this one is a, is a real stinker, I think. This is a tricky one. So question 10 of the Connery round, another Dan Gale question. Fleming gave Bond a semi-catchphrase. What's the score? Name the two Bond films um, with Connery where he says this line or derivations of it. So in, in a couple of the Connery Bond films, he says, what's the score? Or a version of that. Which of the two Connery Bond films are there? And you get a point for each one. So so there are only seven Connery Bonds, if you include Never Say Never. So you've got a bit of a guess anyway. You just have to name two of them and you'll get a point for each one that he says, what's the score within the dialogue? What's the score? Okay, let me see. Uh, okay, so uh, one point per answer, isn't it, that one? so One point per answer, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, okay. That's a good bit of trivia. I never knew that. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good one, that one. We went pretty deep on it, did, uh, did Mr. Gale. All right. So that's the end of round number two, the Connery round. So... Chris, let's go yes. back to the beginning and go through the answers. Okay, so everyone ready? Question one from the Connery round. Which Spectre agent was electrocuted during the Spectre meeting in Thunderball? Now, it was obviously a number, and it was number nine. So the answer was Spectre agent number nine. Uh, number 11 was his his uh, co-part who, uh, who is collecting the Red China narcotics money, but he didn't die. Uh, okay, on to question two. According to Bond in Never Say Never Again, I hope some of you get this, who gave him the greatest pleasure of his life? It was, of course, not Fatima Blush, but a girl in Philadelphia. I can see Ryan nodding his head. Oh, Hunter got yep. it. Good stuff, guys. Nice uh, to do. You, you, do you want to do the next two, Tom? We'll go uh, yeah, like that. Ne number three is, what is the final line in Diamonds Are Forever? And it was, of course, uttered by Tiffany Koch. And she said, James, how the hell do we get those diamonds down again? Once again, that was, James, how the hell do we get those diamonds down again? Two of our contestants got that correct. So Nice. And, and the then next, next question, number four is... What's the next line? I'm going to have to do my Connery again. <clears throat> I'll try and do it as properly as I can. Your power source had our organization puzzled for some time. 
Now, that is, of course, at dinner with Dr. No. And Dr. No says, they are still puzzled, Mr. Bond. Of course, of course. <laughs> Which I thought was a great answer. You yeah. got to love Dr. No. Yeah, cool. Question five, Chris. Okay, so this one was a tricky one. Uh, again, if you get within five of the answer, you get a half mark. What were Bond and Honey's Geiger readings after they were captured on Crab Key? Bond's was 95, Honey's 88. So a point for each or half a mark if you're within five of each of those. But that again, that is a tricky one. And on to question six, I know Hunter will love this. How many carrots rough is the Akbar Shah? <laughs> One of carrots rough. It is a hundred and sixteen carrots rough. Uh, a hundred and sixteen carrots rough. Why? Okay. So this are you, are you contesting that answer, Hunter? Well, whose questions were these? This is Jack Lugo. Jack Lugo's. Okay, because he does I'm mention he mentions uh, he, he mentions more than one diamond, doesn't he? Because he mentions a couple and he mentions different. Uh, levels of carrots rough. No, I, I, I'm sure I'm wrong. I'm sure I'm wrong. That's right. Um, no worries. Okay, well, if we, we can investigate afterwards, this. if we investigate afterwards, everybody on the internet just write to Jack Lugo <laughs> at <laughs> theinternet.com and complain. You'll love it. Uh, on cool. to question seven, Tommy. Question number seven. In what year was Connery knighted? It was, of course, 2000. Very nice. We've got a full mark and a half mark from uh, our contestants there. And then, uh, so it was uh, the year 2000 for the year Connery was knighted. Question eight, for a decade between 1992 and 2002, Sean owned a film company that was named after the area in Edinburgh in which he grew up in. What was the name of the com- company? It was, of course, Fountain Bridge Films. Ooh. So there you go. Fountain Bridge was the place he grew up in, in Edinburgh. There we go. Okay, on to question nine, which was, which character has been played by both Sean and Jason Connery? This is an uh, a legendary British character called Robin Hood. So both oh, both Sean and Jason Connery played Robin Hood. For anyone who's never heard of that name, we apologise because it is a very British thing. So it's it's a tricky question from that point of view. And neither of them was good as Kevin Costner, were they? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and final question from the Connery round. Fleming gave Bond a semi-catchphrase. What's the score? Can you name two... Connery Bond films in which he he mentioned variations of that line. They were You Only Live Twice, where he, he says to Aki, now what the hell's the score? And also in Diamonds Are Forever, he says it to Felix, what what's the score with Washington? So yeah, Diamonds Are Forever and You Only Live Twice. You get a point for each of those. All right, good stuff. So scores are in. I'm not going to reveal them to the end, but the leader has changed. That's all I'm going to say. So how is everybody doing at home? Everybody's playing along on Boxing Day. We're obviously recording this a little bit before Boxing Day, so we don't know what presents we've got from Father Christmas yet. But I hope you got some good ones. That's all I'm going to say, and I hope you're you're doing well in the quiz. So the next round is, of course, the George Lazenby round. So everybody ready? Ready. Chris, are you ready? ready. Yes. Okay, question one. (laughs) <laughs> what is the rather uninspiring gadget that Q presents to M during the pre-titles of On Her Majesty's Secret Service? Finally an easy one. <laughs> Here we yeah. go. There so, are some achievable ones in the quiz. Just yeah. I've, I've reverted tactics this year because I read everyone else's questions first and I thought, blimey, I bet I'm going to throw <laughs> a few nice, a few nice <laughs> ones in there. So I'll say that again. Question one, what is the rather uninspiring gadget that Q is showing to M in the pre-titles of Honor Majesties? Question two, a little bit trickier maybe, who played the Scandinavian girl as one of Blofeld's Angels of Death? So, ooh, so who ooh. played the Scandinavian girl one of Blofeld's Angels of Death. And, and yeah. It's a, it's a tricky one, that one. A tricky one. It is a tricky one. I'm just watching Hunter's cat in the background climbing up a <laughs> tower. <laughs> Making it, he's going to make a jump for it. Yeah, he's got his Blofeld vibes coming. All right, question number three. I've seen it advertised, I tell you. Name that character. Once again. I've seen it advertised, I tell you. Name that character. 
And I think uh, here we should say that if you can get either the first name or the surname, you yeah. get a half mark. If you get the full, both the first and the surname, you'll get a full mark. <laughs> this is that classic, you know it, but you don't know it when it's asked. Hmm. Hunter's in pain over there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Right, we're waiting for an answer from, from Hunter's the last one. Okay, that's a good guess. All right, cool. Question number four is, what's the next line? Why do you persist in rescuing me, Mr. Bond? Once again, what's the next line? Why do you persist in rescuing me, Mr. Bond? That, of course, comes from the future Mrs. Bond. Uh, one of our contestants is pretty much there. So it, oh, I don't know. Are we going strict with that, Chris? Have they got to get the words bang on for a full point? No, I think at, with the long sentences, if it's almost there, give them a full mark. If it's kind of there, a half mark. All right. That's that's a half marker then. Yeah. Okay, okay cool. cool. All right. Next question, Chris, when you ready. Okay. On to question five. During the College of Arms sequence, Sir Hilary Bray informs Bond of his ancestor, Sir Thomas Bond, who died in 1794. The, the year isn't the question. Don't worry about that. What place was Sir Thomas Bond a baronet of? Jesus Christ. If I... and, and we will <laughs> give you a clue. It's a district in London. <laughs> If that helps, which it probably doesn't. No, it, it does not. <laughs> so during the College of Arms, is this another Jack Lugo question? I bet it is. Uh, or is it probably. a Dobson? It's, it's got to be, yeah. yeah um, this is, that's a Lugo question. That's yeah. a Lugo question. During the College of Arms sequence, Sir Hilary Bray informs Bond of his ancestor, Sir Thomas Bond, who died in 1794. What place was Sir Thomas Bond a baronet of? And question six, or oh, is there is that enough time? Sorry, uh, uh, I'll give give him a bit more time. All right, cool. That's okay. All the answers okay. are in there. Question six: Where was the Italian flood disaster that D Draco used as a cover when he claimed he was delivering medical supplies? <laughs> this is definitely a Jack Lugo question. <laughs> I'll say that again. Sorry. Holy okay. shit! Somebody got that right. I was not expecting. Wow. That. Okay, where was the Italian flood disaster that Dr Draco used as his cover when he claimed he was delivering medical supplies? I, I'm Whoever along got that, the way well that somebody done got indeed. that right. Yeah. Okay, just waiting for Hunter now. Good answer, I like that. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Okay, next question. Uh... What is the name of George Lazenby's agent who originally told him he should apply for the role of James Bond? Ooh. If you've been watching your George Lazenby documentary, you would know the answer to this, Becoming Bond. Or Being Bond. What was that called? It was Becoming Bond. Becoming yeah. Bond, yeah, Becoming yeah. Bond. Yeah, that was, that was okay. a fantastic documentary. Okay, good stuff. Hunter's got that one. He's nailed that. Okay. And, okay. Next question. Question number eight. George was formerly a car salesman in Park Lane, London, for which brand of vehicle? George was formerly a car salesman in Park Lane, London, for which brand of vehicle? Once again, you would know that if you've seen Becoming Bond. Ooh, somebody's got that right already. That's good. Okay. Linda's commenting that she hasn't seen Becoming Bond yet. So there's your there's your homework for the day, Linda. <laughs> it's a good watch. Cool All right. Uh, over to you, Chris. Next question. Okay. On to question nine, penultimate question for George. I think this one, in fact, there are two that Dan's given here. One, I think, is, is an easier one and one a difficult one. This, I would say, is probably on the easier side of things. What chocolate delivering character did George portray in commercials before he became Bond? So I'll say that again. What chocolate delivering character did George portray in commercials before he came Bond? 
Now, if you've listened oh. to an older episode of JBR where we interviewed Caroline Monroe, she mentioned that. I I oh. agree. That's a that's a obscure one. <laughs> that was so long but, ago. You know, as well. that was a long time ago. Now, <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Good. Good. Stuff. I tell you what, somebody's on fire in this round. I'm not going to say who it is, but somebody is doing well. Uh, final question then. Question ten for George. Who played Fidian, Sir Hilary Bray's assistant in Majesties? So, who is the actor who portrayed the character Fidian, Sir Hilary Bray's assistant? Now, Fidian was the one in the sequence that was cut out, wasn't it? In the yeah. foot chase, yep. he was going yeah. to chase him across London. That would have been so out. cool if they had actual footage yeah. of that that we could watch in extras or something. There's a few stills, isn't there, lying around, but getting some footage of that would have been great. All right. Linda also says she hasn't seen On Her Majesty's in a long time. <laughs> I should have played it. I should have been strategic and watched it because there's a whole round dedicated to the one actor. <laughs> but, right. but it's, no. it's the Christmas Bond, too. I mean, come on. <laughs> All right, cool. So that's round three in the back. So let's take it back to the beginning, Chris, and go through the uh, the answers. Okay, I think everyone looked quite happy with this one. Question one, George Lazenby round was, what is the rather uninspiring gadget that Q is showing to M during the free titles? It is, of course, radioactive lint, which I keep in my pocket at all times. Of course. Of course. Uh, question two, who played the Scandinavian girl, one of Blofeld's Angels of Death, which was Julie e- Egger. Is it Egger or Edge? Edger? Edger. Say Edge. Yeah, Julie Edger. I think. There we go. Uh, on to question three, Tom. I've seen it advertised, I tell you. Name that character. It was, of course, Campbell. Of Sean course. Campbell. Campbell. Sean Campbell, if you get that, you get. You, what, yeah. would, what do we say, a full point if they get that, or a point each? I can't remember. Uh, I'd say a full point for the whole thing, half a, half a mark for, for one or the other. There you go. Okay, question number four. What's the next line? Why do you persist in rescuing me, Mr. Bond? Said by Contessa Tracy Vicenzo at the casino table after he bails her out with the, with the uh, money for the bet. And Bond says, it's becoming a habit, isn't it, Contessa Teresa? Once again. It's becoming a habit, isn't it, Contessa Teresa? Now, if you get every word of that right, you get a full mark. If you if you get the gist, half a mark. Okay, on the question five. During the College of Arms sequence, Sir Hilary Bray informs Bond of his ancestor, Sir, Tommy, Sir Thomas Bond, who died in 1794. <laughs> what place was Sir Thomas Bond a baronet of? It is, of course, Del Boy's favourite place, Peckham. And that's another reference that you probably won't get because it's a British, <laughs> a British question. That's but yeah, it. it's Peckham. And I uh, wouldn't have got that either, so don't worry about it. Um, and question six, obviously we know at least one of you got this. A uh, very difficult question. Where was the Italian flood disaster that Draco used as his cover when he claimed he was delivering medical supplies? And that was Rivigo. So well done, anyone who got that. Ryan got that right on the nose. How did you know that, dude? That was the, I thought no one would get that. I don't know. It just came to me. I remembered the line. Dude, that's, 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 nice. that's amazing. Good stuff. Good cool. stuff. Nice one, Ryan. Question number seven then was, what was the name of George's agent that originally told him he should apply for the role of Bond? That was, of course, Maggie Abbott. Once again, George's agent who told him to apply for the Bond role was Maggie Abbott. Question number eight George was formerly a car salesman in Park Lane, London. For which brand of vehicle? It was, of course, Mercedes-Benz. Very hmm. nice. Nice. Okay, question nine. What chocolate delivering character did George portray in commercials? It was, of course, Big Fry. Big Fry. And final question, question 10. Who played the character of Fidian, Sir Hilary Bray's assistant? It was the actor Brian Grellis. Brian Grellis. All right, good stuff. So that's round three in the bag. Once again, the person in the lead has switched up. So we've got a little bit of a battle on our hands, everybody. And we will reveal who wins at the end, obviously. All right, cool. Uh, Number four then, category number four, round number four, is the Roger Moore round, everybody. So are you ready at home? Good. I heard everybody say ready. And everybody in the room here is also ready. So, Chris, kick it off when you're ready, mate. Here it is. A little bit of Sir Rog. Question one. 
what airline do both Bond and Goodhead use when they fly to Rio? So I'll say that again. What air? I mean, obviously you can have a guess if you don't know. What airline do both Bond and Goodhead use when they fly to Rio? Okay. Okay. On to question two. What does Max Zorin offer? Uh, sorry, I'll start again. What does Max Zorin ask? Of his fellow business tycoons in order for them to be a part of Operation Main Strike. Now, if you think about this, there's there's a character who says it back to him. Yeah, indeed. and he's not. He's a bit shocked about it. He's not happy about it. He's certainly not going to pay it. That's for sure. No. So I'll so, say that again. Yeah. <laughs> what does Max Zorin ask of his fellow uh, fellow business tycoons in order for them to be a part of Operation Main Strike? And again, there are two things that he asks. I think you can get a half point for each. Or should we say a point for uh, a No, point I, for I'd each. say half a point for each. Yeah, that's, half a point for cool. each. Half a point for each. There we go. Half, so, 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 cool. so, yeah, two chances to get a bit of marks there. Very nice. Okay, good stuff. Question number three then. With which agent did Bond share the same bootmaker? Once again, with what agent did Bond share the same bootmaker? Great question. I was thinking hairbrush, but that's a different different thing. <laughs> different fella. Linda's on the right track. <laughs> Oops, disappeared. Okay. I don't want to say she's still here. Not doing it. She's, okay. Let's... She's just probably googling it. Doesn't want to. Ask <laughs> 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 got, all right. Got all cool the videos stuff. lined up, ready to play. <laughs> no worries. Um, question number four. What's the next line? Give us a kiss. Give us a kiss. <laughs> question number four is what's the next line? Give us a kiss. Give us a kiss. It's so tempting. It's so tempting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, something's just come up there where there are two possible answers that I yeah, haven't thought of. Yep. So you can, you, okay, so there's two times it happens in the film. If you get both of them, you get a point for each. If you get one, that's fine. You get one. All right. So there's a. Yeah, that's that's a very good point, actually. It definitely should have a point for each rather than a half point yeah. for each. Point very, for each. Very. Good stuff. That is a good point. Okay, so it's a point, a full point for each. Thing. Yeah. Okay, and then... This is so much fun, guys, I have to tell you. I'm cool. Time <laughs> here. All right, cool. Uh, yeah. Chris, over to you, mate. Okay, so question five, guys, is... Emil Leopold Locke strangled his psychiatrist to escape from which prison? Ooh. So Emil Leopold Locke strangled his psychiatrist to escape from which prison? Sounds a bit like Grant, because I'm sure he strangled someone to escape from prison, didn't he? And from Russia as well. So he's a henchman following the same sort of thing. It's a tricky one. This is a Jack Lugo question, in case you were wondering. This is another I know it when I hear it. I just can't mm. think of it on the spot. It's, it's the sort of thing where if this was multiple choice, you'd be able to yeah. get them all right. Absolutely. But, but it's not multiple choice, which makes it all the more difficult. Um, but it all is, right, we're yeah, just, you're we're right. just waiting for Hunter there. Okay, answers in. Great stuff. Okay, on to question six then. What number does Eric Kriegler wear in the biathlon? <laughs> So, wow. so Eric Kriegler wears a bib during the biathlon course. What number is on that bib? And we'll give you a hint that it is two figures or two digits. So you have a, a choice between 10 and 99. 
And I think with this one, if they get within five, half mark. Right. Five either side, then half mark. Cool. The answers are in. Great stuff. Over to you, Tom. Question number seven. Roger Moore is mentioned in a song by Amy Winehouse. What is the name of that song? Murder. Murder, you guys. <laughs> Roger Moore is mentioned in a song by Amy Winehouse. What is the name of that song? Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Wicked. And okay. Question number eight is: Roger had an unlimited supply of which brand of cigars during his tenure as Double O Seven? Roger had an unlimited brand supply of which brand of cigars during his tenure as 007? And for a bonus point, how many cigar- cigars did he smoke <laughs> during his tenure? That, it must be <laughs> hundreds and hundreds, I'd say. My father's going to disown me if I get this one wrong. <laughs> is he a cigar aficionado? Absolutely. Do you think he'd definitely know the answer? I have a feeling he'd probably know. Are you texting him now? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> no, he's not allowed to listen to this. Cool. Excellent okay. stuff. Over to you, Chris. Okay, so final two questions, penultimate question. This is, in fact, this is a great bit of trivia. Which was the first of Roger's Bond films in which he doesn't call someone darling? So which was the first of Roger Moore's Bond films in which he doesn't call someone darling? Now, you know what, right? When I read that question, I thought, let me see if I can get that. And it's actually doable. Yeah. If you just think of scenes with, obviously, Bond and a lady. We're all just, yeah, we're all just thinking of every time he said darling now. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, you got one out of seven chance. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, then last question from Chris. Okay, final question for the Roger Moore round. In which film does Bond, Roger's Bond use a Walther P5 instead of a Walther PPK? Now we're in my wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say we're that again. In, in which Roger's Bond film does he use a Walther P5 instead of a Walther PPK? Right. Cool. I believe we, we, you you're both military men, aren't you, Hunter and Ryan? Yeah. Navy. Okay. All right. Navy. Ah, that one. Very nice. <laughs> All right. That is the uh the Roger round in the bag. So let's scoot back and do the answers then, Chris. Take it okay. away. Okay. So question one, Roger round was what airline do both Bond and Goodhead use when they fly to Rio? The airline is, of course, Air France, which we see on the Concorde and also on the ticket in uh, the hotel room in the Danielli. Question two, what does Max Zorin ask of his fellow business tycoons in order for them to be a part of Operation Main Strike? It was $100 million plus half our net income. So, <laughs> of course, of course. That was a so, beautiful okay. impression there. I like that. <laughs> Question number three was, with which agent in Bond share the same bootmaker? I rather like Burn. Ba- ah, I, <laughs> oh, no. I rather like Baines, sir. We shared the same bootmaker. It was, of course, Baines. Baines. There he is. Of course. And question number four, what's the next line? Give us a kiss. Give us a kiss. Now, there were two possible <laughs> answers. You do one and I'll do the other, Tommy. Which was, I'll give you a nut. Or, oh, really, Mr. Bond? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. All right, cool. Next up, question number five. 
Oh no, this is yep. you in it, Chris. Go so Emil Leopold Lock strangled his psychiatrist to escape from which prison? This was quite a tricky one. It was Neymar prison. So mm. Neymar. Uh, question six: What number does Eric Kriegler wear during the biathlon course? It was number forty-eight. So 48 is the one he wears. Thanks, Jack, for those questions. <laughs> Question number seven. Roger is, mentioned, Roger is mentioned in a song by Amy Winehouse. What is the name of that song? It is, of course, You Know That I'm No Good. You Know That I'm No Good. That one. Question number eight. Roger had unlimited supply of which brand of cigars during his tenure as 007? It was, of course, Monte Cristo. Hmm. Good one, guys. Good one. Okay, so two more. Question number nine was, what was the first Roger Bond film in which he does not call someone darling? It was, of course, Moonraker. Huh. Nice. And yep. final question for the Roger round. In which film does Roger Bond use a Walther P5 instead of a Walther PPK? The answer was Octopussy. Very nice. Okay. All right, cool. It's time for the Timmy round, everybody. Have we got any Timmy fans on the line today? Anybody whose oh. favourite Bond is Timmy? <laughs> right nice. here. All right, cool. Two Timmy fans. Good stuff. All right, then, Chris, kick it off when you're ready, mate. Okay, question one, Timmy round is, can you name the three double O agents in the pre-titles of The Living Daylights? Oh. So, <laughs> can you name the three double O agents? I think you'll get one. Uh, by, that, by, that, <laughs> by that is not their name, it's the number. Yeah, the so all we number. need is, is the three numbers. I'm sure you get one. So the three agents. How are we scoring this round? A point for each? Yeah, a point for each. Why not? A point for each. It's yeah. Christmas. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Trying to look. Okay, so let me just score these out quickly. Okay, very nice. On to the next one. Okay, lovely. On to question two. What drink does Pam Bouvier order at the Barrelhead Bar in Benini? In Bimini? 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 <laughs> Which Bond also has as well. So so what drink does Pam Bouvier order at the Barrelhead Bar, which Bond also has as well? Okay. Well, everybody did well with that one. All right, cool. Question number three then. In The Living Daylights, who is referred to as General Gogol's replacement? In the Living Daylights, who is referred to as General Gogol's replacement? And if you think about it, it's not too difficult, that one. That's good. I tell you what, everyone's on fire in the Timmy round so far. Okay. And question number four. What's the next line? Did I say something wrong? What's the next line? Did I say something wrong? Tricky one, that one. Good one. Very good. Oh. Okay, we're just waiting on Hunter there. I know it, but I don't. Okay. No worries. Over to you, Chris. Okay. On to question five, which is an absolute beauty. I know this has come up a few times before. Can you name the exact section and paragraph that Saunders cites to Bond to let him know that certain information <laughs> is on a need-to-know basis only? So what section and paragraph does Saunders cite to Bond to let him know that a certain information is on a need-to-know basis only? Now, how are we scoring this one? If they get I, the... I think it has to be okay. A point for each, should we say? But it has to be bang on. We can't well, have anything we either do, side. We do half, half and half. Okay, half and two, half for this one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so half point. So but okay. no points if it's if it's not exact on the money for either or. Of course. Okay. Well, what I'm telling you is, is everybody's getting their paragraphs right, but perhaps not their sections. Oh. All right. Okay. So. There we go. On to question six. Is everyone answered for that one? Uh, yep, they're yep. all in. 
Brilliant. Okay, on to question six. How much money does Bond deposit at the Banco de Ismas? So in License to Kill, how much money does Bond deposit at the Banco de Ismas? Now, if you think how much money he recently came into, minus a little bit, you might you might be on the right track. <laughs> Just think of that guy with the white teeth and shit-eating grin. <laughs> <laughs> okay just waiting on hunter okay now do we how are we scoring that one are we are we, are we any rig, wiggle room in yeah terms okay of- we'll go bang on the money a full mark and if yeah. it's a hundred thousand either side we'll go a half mark okay in that case half mark goes there boom boom all right julio next question Oh, no, that's me. Yeah. Question number seven. What is the name of the character that Timothy Dalton plays in the movie Hot Fuzz? That's a Brian Dobson question. What is the name of the character that Timothy Dalton plays in the movie Hot Fuzz? Such a good film. Though. Linda Zoo's straight in there, back of the net immediately. Look at that. Uh, okay. Have you all seen Hot Fuzz? Well, obviously, Linda has. Hunter and Ryan, have you both seen Hot Fuzz? Well, uh, films. At, I've seen parts of yeah, it. Yeah, it is it's brilliant. It's a really, really good film. Now we've had a question. We've had an answer coming, Chris. Yep. I need to confer with you. That yep. is referring to the right person, but it's not the name. So does that get a half mark? Yeah, I think that gets a half mark. Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, question number eight. This is a tough one from Dobson. What was the name of the only film that Timothy made between Living Daylights and Licence to Kill? It also starred Jill Bennett, who played Jacob Brink in Fioras Only, and Jeffrey Palmer, who played Admiral Roebuck in Tomorrow Never Dies. So what is the name wow. of the only film that Tim made in between The Living Daylights and Licence to Kill? And it also starred Jacob Brink and Admiral Roebuck. All right, some good guesses there. Okay, let me just mark that one. Okay. Boom, boom. Okay, over to you, Chris. Okay, last two questions of the Timmy round. Question nine. In the living daylights, what two letters are written on the side uh, on the side doors of the Lada police cars? Oh. So in the living Ooh. daylights, what two letters are written on the side doors of the Lada police cars? Should we give them a half mark if they get one of the letters right? It's a tricky one. <laughs> well, we <laughs> could do it, but, but oh. nobody got any of them right. So it's oh, right. oh, right. <laughs> oh, well, in that Sorry. case. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, final question, question 10. Uh, this one is a good Ah, oh, This one made me chuckle when I had it. In License to Kill, which character says the line, he can finger me? <laughs> in, oh. in License to Kill, which character <laughs> says the line, saucy? He can finger me. You can do it, people. Oh, what Ryan's got in there straight out of the game. And that was also <laughs> from Dan Gale as well. Okay. He's got a naughty mind, that Dan Gale. Okay, we're just waiting on Hunter Brining. Okay. Very good. Okay, so that's the end of the Timmy round. So Chris, if you could take us yep. back to question number one and uh, go through the answers. Okay, so we're given, like we said, we've got uh, one mark for each correct answer for this one. In the pre-title sequence of The Living Daylights, can you name the three agents parachuting into Gibraltar? They were, of course, 007, which I hope you got, 002, and 004. So 002, 004, and 007. Question two, what drink does Pam Bouvier order at the Barrelhead Bar, which Bond also has? It was, of course, a bud with lime. Question number three is who is referred to as General Gogol's replacement? It is, of course, General Pushkin. Question number four, what's the next line? Did I say something wrong? He was married once, but it was a long time ago. That's, of course, oh, Della yeah, to of course, Felix. Of course, yeah. There it is. Okay, on to question five. Name the exact section and paragraphs that Saunders cites to Bond. It was, of course, section 26, 
paragraph five. I think there must have been some close answers for that one. There, were, there was, there was, there was. The paragraphs were all spot on. Everybody yeah. got the paragraph right. It was the, it was the section that needed some work. But we are yeah. getting a half mark for, for um, getting the paragraph right. So yeah, if you read the sections, it says how Double O's aren't allowed to steal people's sandwiches out of the fridge at MI6. So that was <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. On to uh, question six: How much money does Bond deposit in the bank called the Ithmas? It was, of course. Four million nine hundred thousand dollars. So if you got five million, you get a half mark, or if you got four million eight hundred thousand, you get a half mark. But we wanted four million nine hundred thousand for the full mark there. All right, good stuff. Question number eight: What was the name of seven? The only f- seven. What is the name of the character that Tim plays in Hot Fuzz? It was, of course, Simon Skinner. Half point for the grocery store owner, as Ryan said there. Very nice. <laughs> Question number eight. What is the name of the only film that Tim made in between Living Daylights and License to Kill? It was, of course, Hawks. Mm. On to question nine. In the Living Daylights, what were the two numbers written on the side of the uh, police cars, which Thomas said that no one got? It was VB, Victor Bravo. Um, Okay, and final question. In License to Kill, which character says the line, he can finger me? It was, of course, that dirty beast, Milton Crest. All right, good stuff. Okay, next round then. This is round number six. This is the Pierce Brosnan round. Now, is everybody doing okay? Does anyone need to have a little bathroom break or anything like that? Are we all doing okay? I think we're all right. All right, we're all good. Okay, then let's let's power on. The Brosnan round. How are you guys doing? Are you guys feeling pretty confident? Not anymore. (laughs) 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 These are rough questions. I'll tell you what, though, the Timmy round, a lot of you were bang on the money. Like, all three of you did very well on the Timmy round, it must be said. Which is good to hear. I like it. I'm just just hoping for some uh, Die Another Day questions, maybe throw you two off. (laughs) 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 There there may be one or two. There may be one or two. All right, Uh, Brosnan round. When you're ready, Chris. Let's kick it off. Brosnan, question one. What were the names of Zukovsky's escort girls in The World Is Not Enough? So there are two girls that are flirting with him in the casino. What were the name of his escort girls in the world is not enough. And again, we'll give, we'll give you a mark for either one. So you can have a maximum of two marks for this one. Again, if you think about that one, a character says their names. Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> very nice cool next one okay qu- on to question two what was the name of the abandoned underground station in die another day so bond visits an underground station which is abandoned in die another day what was the name of that station it's quite a bit of a tricky one that one Okay. Question number three. In Goldeneye, Bond remarks that M's predecessor kept some cognac in his office. What drink does M say she prefers? I hear the new M is a lady. In Goldeneye, Bond remarks that M's predecessor kept some cognac in his office. What drink does M say she prefers? Very good. Okay. Everybody's doing well on that. Cool. Question number four. What's the next line? In London, April is a spring month. Uh, What's the next line? In London, April is a spring month. Just waiting on Commander Brining. Okay. Over to you, Chris. Okay. On to question five and Jack Lugo. According to Mark Edlitt's new book, The Lost Adventures of James Bond, <laughs> what two characters from Tomorrow Never Dies were considered 
for potential spin-off series. Now you'll get a point ah. for each. So I'll say that again. According to Mark Edlitt's new book, The Lost Adventures of James Bond, what two characters from Tomorrow Never Dies were considered for potential spin-off series? And you can get a point for each year. So if you don't know, make sure you have some wild guesses in there because, yeah, definitely worth worth a go in there. All right, cool. All the answers are in. Lovely. On to question six. Who does Bond pretend to be when he first meets Christmas Jones? So when, when Bond first meets Christmas Jones, he's pretending to be someone else. What is the name of that character? I don't know any doctor jokes. <laughs> okay. All right, all answers are in. Question number seven. Pierce played alongside Joe Don Baker in GoldenEye and Tomorrow Never Dies, but he also played alongside him in a Tim Burton film made between these two in 1996. What was that film? I remember going to see that at the cinema when it came out. Mm. Pierce play, played alongside Joe Don Baker in GoldenEye and Tomorrow Never Dies, but he also played alongside him in a Tim Burton film made between those two in 1996. What was ah. that film? Good stuff. Question number eight. What is Pierce Brosnan's middle name? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, definitely a few shaking of heads and a few oohs and a few <laughs> This is a tricky one. I was on his Wikipedia page last week. Have you got a shortcut to it now? And <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm being honorable. Okay. I'm just waiting on Linda Zhu. Okay. Over to you, Chris. Question number nine. Okay. Question nine for Pierce is, which Brosnan film was called Death Comes Tomorrow in Poland? So one of the Brosnan's film was released in Poland with a different title, which translates to Death Comes Tomorrow. Which of those Bosnian Bond films was it? All right, all the answers are in there. Lovely. Final question then is an is another tricky one for Mr. Gale here. Who was the director of photography for The World Is Not Enough? So who was sure. the director of photography? For the world is not enough. That is a bit of a stinker, that one. Okay, that is a stinker indeed. All right, all the answers are in. So let's cross back to question number one of the Brosnan round, Chris, and we'll go through the answers. Okay, so question one was what were the names of Zukovsky's two escort girls in The World Is Not Enough. They were, of course, Nina and Volushka. Nina and Volushka. She get a point for each. Nina and Volushka. Yeah. Uh, on to question two. What was the name of the abandoned tube station in Die Another Day? It was Vauxhall Cross. Of course. Vauxhall Cross. Question number three. In Goldeneye, Bond remarks that M's predecessor kept some cognac in his office. What does... What drink does Emma say she prefers? It was, of course, bourbon. Question number four. What's the next line? In London, April is a spring month. Oh, yeah. What are you, the weatherman? <laughs> nice, Tommy. There it is. <laughs> okay. On to question five. According to Mark Edlitt's book, The Lost Adventures of James Bond, what two characters from Tomorrow Never Dies had potential spin-off series? These were Waylin. And Dr. Kaufman, apparently. Dr. Kaufman. So there we go. Point for each there. Now, question six. Who does Bond pretend to be when he first meets Christmas Jones? It was Dr. Mikhail Arkoff. 
Russian Atomic Energy Department. So Dr. Mikhail Arkoff there. Number seven, Pierce played alongside Joe Don Baker in a Tim Burton film made between Goldeneye and Tomorrow Never Dies. What was that? I'm going to say that again because I just completely butchered that. Pierce played alongside Joe Don Baker in Goldeneye and Tomorrow Never Dies. But he also played alongside him in a Tim Burton film made between those two films in 1996. What was that film? It was, of course, Mars Attacks. What a beauty. They don't make them like that anymore, do they? Question number eight. What is Pierce's middle name? It is, of course, Brendan. Over to you, Chris. Okay, two more to go. Question number nine. Which Brosnan film was called Death Comes Tomorrow in Poland? It was Die Another Day. So well Which makes done. sense, doesn't it, when you think about it, doesn't it? Yep. Death Comes yep. Tomorrow. Because as soon as you day. hear the word tomorrow, some people might think, oh, it's got to be Tomorrow Never Dies, mm. but obviously it's the opposite of that. So, mm. yeah, well done to everyone who got that. Final question, which is a real tricky one, if, if anyone happened to get this. Who was the director of photography on The World Is Not Enough? It was Adrian Biddle. And I don't think he did any other Bond films as DOP. Do you? I, I, that's the first time I've ever heard the name Adrian Biddle. I will be honest. Yeah. I'm going to throw my Bond fan <laughs> card into the, into the toilet there on that one. So I don't know me, but there that you go. That was a tricky that's one. A tricky one. Yeah. So what I will say for everybody listening at home and for everybody in the room as well, is that there have been more points scored in the last two rounds than in the whole quiz put together so far, wow. right? So people know their Timmy, people know their Pierce, okay? I'm very impressed with that. All right, it's time for the Daniel Quay. Quay. <laughs> <laughs> the Daniel Quay ground. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep that in. I won't even cut that bit out. The Daniel Quay ground, everybody. Chris, when are you ready, mate? Okay. <laughs> Yikes. Well, let's see. So everyone did really well over the last two rounds. Let's see how you do for Daniel Quay. Okay, question one. <laughs> What is a Michael G. Wilson's cameo in Casino Royale? So what is Michael G. Wilson's cameo in Casino Royale? So it's not it's not necessarily a name, it's more what his character is. Mm -hmm. okay. Everyone in? Everyone's in. Brilliant. Okay, on to question two. What similarities connect the guns issued to Bond by Q in both Licence to Kill and Skyfall? So what similarities connect the guns issued to Bond by Q in both Licence to Kill and Skyfall? Okay. The Daniel round is on off to a strong start for everybody. Good stuff. Question number three. <clears throat> Inspector. When Madeline Swan is asking Bond questions at the clinic, she asks how much alcohol he consumes. What is his reply? So, Inspector, when Madeline Swan is asking Bond questions at the Hoffler Clinic, she asks how many, al how much alcohol he consumes. What is his reply? Great scene. That's a good one, isn't it? Really good one. Question number four. <clears throat> After Bond and M switch cars to the DB5 in Skyfall, M remarks, it's not very comfortable, is it? What's the next line? After Bond and M switch cars to the DB5 in Skyfall, M remarks, it's not very comfortable, is it? What's the next line? Ah. Okay. Over to you, Chris. Okay. On to question five, which is a potential two-pointer. How many years did Craig Mitchell work for MI6? And for an additional point, how many of these years did he work as M's personal bodyguard? So you can get a point for each. How many years did Craig Mitchell work for MI6? And of those years, how many did he work as M's personal bodyguard? That was, of course, a Jack Lugo question. Of course. <laughs> okay. Lovely. Okay, on to question six. How many Vesper martinis does Bond drink on the flight to Bolivia with Mathis? So how many Vesper martinis 
did Bond drink on the flight to Bolivia with Mathis? Okay, good stuff. Question number seven. This is a Dobson question. What is Daniel Craig's middle name? That is, what is Daniel Craig's middle name? Okay, it's an unusual one, I'll give you that. Question number eight. The opera Tosca features in Daniel's second outing as Bond. Who composed this opera? Thanks, Jack. <laughs> the opera Tosca features in Daniel's second outing as Bond. Who composed this opera? Okay, over to you, Chris. Okay. Uh, question nine. Actress Sai Chin appeared in You Only Live Twice, giving, giving Sean's Bond his very best duck. Which Daniel Craig film did she also appear in? So, actress Sai Chin appeared in You Only Live Twice, giving Don his very best duck. Which Daniel Craig film did she also appear in? Cool. All yep. the answers are in. Okay. Final question of the Daniel Craig round. The granddaughter of which famous actor played Perla de la Dunas receptionist in Quantum of Solace? So the granddaughter of which famous actor played the Perla de las Dunas receptionist in Quantum of Solace? So that's the receptionist at the hotel at the end of Quantum of Solace. Her grandfather is a, is a very, very famous actor. Or perhaps should I say was a very, very famous actor. And there we go. All right, all the answers are in. So let's circle back to the beginning of the round, Chris, and go through the answers. Okay, so question one, Daniel Craig round. What is Michael G. Wilson's cameo in Casino Royale? It was, of course, the chief of police in Montenegro. Excellent stuff. On to question two. What similarities are there between the guns issued to Bond by Q in both Licence to Kill and Skyfall? It is that they both have optical palm readers to read Bond's palm print, so he only he can use the gun. So basically, if you say palm reader or something like yeah, that, yeah, palm that's print all reader, good, that's yeah. all good. Yep. Cool. Inspector, uh, question three. Inspector, when Madeline Swan asks Bond questions at the Hoffler Clinic, she asks how much alcohol he consumes. What his reply? What is his reply? It is obviously too much. Question number four. After Bond and M switch cars to the DB5 in Skyfall, M remarks, it's not very comfortable, is it? What's Bond's reply? It is, of course. Are you going to complain the whole way? And then he flips open the little ejector seat button. There it is. Over okay. to you, Chris. Question five. How many years did Craig Mitchell work for MI6? And of those, how many years did he work as M's personal bodyguard? So it's a potential point for each. He worked for MI6 for eight years, and he was M's personal bodyguard for five years. Okay. And question six. How many Vesper martinis did Bond drink on the flight to Bolivia with Mathis? It was a, a, hell, it was a hell of a lot, actually. It's six Vespers. In <laughs> that's going to give you a sore head in the morning that's for sure what a lightweight <laughs> question number seven what is daniel craig's middle name it is of course rawton rawton that's got w-r-o-u-g-h-t-o-n question number eight the opera tosca features in daniel's second outing as bond who composed this opera it is of course Puccini. Okay, two more to go. Question nine. Actress Sai Chin appeared in You Only Live Twice, giving Sean's Bond his very best duck. What Daniel Craig film did she also appear in? That was Casino Royale. There we go. Final question. The granddaughter of which famous actor played the Perla de las Dunas receptionist in Quantum of Solace? <laughs> it was Charlie Chaplin. And it was Una Chaplin was the uh, actress who played the receptionist. But yeah, granddaughter of Charlie Chaplin there. Really? Yeah. Oh. And as Hunter pointed out in his answer, it's she also played Rob Stark's wife in Game of Thrones. And I, yeah, no I didn't I didn't notice that. So I've learned something today. Well done. Very nice. Thanks, Hunter. All right. So 
<laughs> um, looking at the scores, I'm telling you, right, there's a lot of scoring happening. And somebody who had a slower start is now cruising along very nicely. That's all I'm going to say. And we will find out at the end, obviously, the order of, of winnage. Next up, <laughs> what round is it, Chris? Okay. It is. We have the... Guess the quote. No, we don't really. It's the Ian Fleming round. <laughs> the Ian Fleming round. Okay, so sometimes this can be one of the toughest rounds going. It certainly was for the last last couple of years. Question one, Ian Fleming round. What song did Sting write when he was sitting at Fleming's desk in Goldeneye? So Sting, obviously Sting in the police. What song did Sting write when he was sitting at his desk in uh, Ian Fleming's desk in Goldeneye. There must be some magic on that desk because that that was a big tune, wasn't it? That one. Yeah, certainly was. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've got one winner there. Okay, okay, next one. On to question two: Who played Fleming in the TV film *The Spy Maker: The Secret Life of Ian Fleming*? So who played Ian Fleming in the TV film Spy Maker, The Secret Life of Ian Fleming? And for a hint, his name may have appeared on this quiz already at some point. All right, all the answers are in. Question number three. Which Fleming book begins with the line, the 238s roared simultaneously? Question number three, which Fleming book begins with the line, Fleming Bond book, that is, the 238s roared simultaneously? Ooh, there we go. Excellent. Question number four, what was the name of the artist who designed the cover for From Russia With Love? What was the name of the artist who designed the cover for From Russia With Love? Okay, over to you, Chris. Okay, Okay. Ah. question five. This Austrian town is where Ian Fleming was sent to by his mother to improve his languages before sitting examinations um, for the foreign office. God, this is quite a big uh, question. Sorry, guys. Later in life, Fleming would base this section of On Her Majesty's Secret Service where Bond escapes from Peace Gloria, skiing away from an avalanche upon his own experience there. Fleming had once gone down a slope that would have been closed to possibility due to an avalanche. What is his name of this Austrian town? <laughs> so just to give you a yeah, just to give you a brief again. So what is the name of the Austrian town where Ian Fleming was sent to by his mother? That's the easiest way of saying it. <laughs> I tell you what, the one that's probably the easiest to get, the way to think of it, because there's a lot of angles in that question. Yeah. Fleming based a section of majesties. Where Bond escapes from Peace Gloria, skiing away from an avalanche upon his own experience there. Yeah. That's Fleming good. had once gone down that slope. Yeah, that's probably the best way to put it. Thanks. <laughs> okay. All good? Yep. Okay, okay. all in, on to question six. On to question six. What Fleming James Bond chapter, or what Fleming Bond novel features a chapter titled How to Eat a Girl? <laughs> Sorry for the cringy looks. That is a, <laughs> oh, please do. Eyebrow raising question there. <laughs> I'll say that again. Which Fleming Bond novel, <laughs> in, in, in which Fleming Bond novel, is there a chapter titled how to eat a girl. Fleming, you dirty dog. Okay, all the answers are in there. Lovely. Question number seven. Which news agency employed Ian Fleming as a journalist in 1931? Which news agency employed Ian Fleming as a journalist in 1931? Okay. 
Okay. Question number eight. What R was the name of the deception operation conceived by Ian Fleming when he was in naval intelligence? Hunter, being a naval man, you should know this. Once again, question eight. What R was the name of the deception operation conceived by Ian Fleming when he was in naval intelligence? Sorry, this point, Tom. So good. They're not not easy ones. These all answers are in. Okay, on to question nine. We've got two more tricky ones here. Written in 1927, one of Fleming's earliest short stories about a man who takes his own life after a final meal in a restaurant is called "A Poor Man." What? So, a poor man something. I'll say that again. Written in 1927, one of Fleming's earliest short stories about a man who takes his own life after a final meal at a restaurant is called A Poor Man Something. What is that word? That's a very difficult one because I didn't yeah. even know he'd written no, some short stories. No, I, I had never heard of this actually. Yeah. Um, but if you want to put a stab at it, you know, put a stab in the dark, have a guess. A Poor Man Something. Mm-hmm. All right, all answers are in. And final question for the Fleming round. In 1952, Fleming, a passionate book collector, founded a periodical for bibliophiles, which has continued to run to the present day, now run by his nephews, James and Fergus Fleming. What is the name? uh, What is it called? So I'll say that again. In 1952, Fleming, a passionate book collector, founded a periodical for bibliophiles, which has continued to run to the present day. It's now run by his nephews, James and Fergus Fleming. What is it called? You you might not call it that in America. So it's basically a magazine for book collectors, basically. Yeah, that's an easy way to say. So, yeah, magazine for book collectors. This is another one I've never heard of, actually. And you know what? I don't think these these last two are Dan Gale questions. They are. Of course they are. (laughs) He was like... I didn't even know this myself. So, <laughs> no, <there you> no. <laughs> but, but all up until now, his yeah. two questions have had one easier, one hard. And this yeah. is the first time where he's hit two bangers. So it's a, yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit tricky, that one. All right. That's the end of the Fleming round then. So, Chris, if you do the honours yep. with the answers, please. Okay. So question one for the Fleming round was, what song did Sting write while sitting at Fleming's desk in Goldeneye? It was, every breath you take. What a beauty. Oh, yeah. Question two, who played Fleming in the TV film Spy Maker, a Spy Maker, The Secret Life of Ian Fleming? It was, of course, Jason Connery. So there we go. Question, Question three, Tom. three. In which Fleming Bond book begins with the line, the 238s roared simultaneously? That is, of course, Moonraker. What a brilliant opening line as well, putting you Indeed. right in the action. Fantastic. Mm. Question number four. What was the name of the artist who designed the cover for From Russia with Love? It was, of course, Richard Chopping. Uh, Question five. Which Austrian town, which Ian Fleming himself visited, would would he base a section from Honor Majesty's Secret Service on? The town was called Kitzbühler. Kitzbühl. 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 (laughs) That's the one. (laughs) Oh, uh, Ryan's pop- popped off for a bit, I think. No worries. He's already answered anyway, so it's, he Is doesn't he? need to hear the answer anyway. So go on, do question number six. Okay, question six. Which Fleming novel features a ta- chapter titled How to Eat a Girl? The book was Thunderball. Oh, now, nice. if now actually, if, if you think about the film, you'll probably get it because this is the part where Domino and Bond are on the beach. She's oh. just stood on the egg spines. And in the book, he says he tasted her feet, but obviously, uh, in the film, sorry, but in, in the book, it's How to Eat a Girl. And he, in the book, he says, this is the first time I've eaten a woman. They're rather good. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. All right. Question number seven. Which news agency employed Ian Fleming as a journalist in 1931? It was, of course, Reuters. Question number eight. What R was the name of the deception operation conceived by Ian Fleming when he was in naval intelligence? It was, of course, Operation Ruthless. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, question nine, written in 1927, one of Fleming's earliest short stories about a man who takes his own life after a final meal in a restaurant was titled A Poor Man Escapes. A Poor Man Escapes. I'd like to read that. That yeah. sounds like a very Fleming y story, doesn't it? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. It does sound quite interesting. I'd like to track, track that down. I'd, yeah. I, I, I'm, it's crazy I've not heard of that before. We'll have to sort of share it once we get it and mm. uh, and, and stick it on for everyone to read. Uh, final question then, Fleming Round 1952. Fleming, a passionate book collector, founded a sort of uh, a collection of magazines. For, uh, what, how, would you, how did you sort of say it, Tom? Basically, for people for that like magazines. Book yeah. collectors. Um, what was it called? It was called The Book Collector. How I suppose that's why Dan worded it the way he did. <laughs> he, exactly, yeah. A periodical a for one, bibliophiles <laughs> rather than a magazine for book collectors. Yeah. He's oh, sneaky on that, that how, right. how How's the scores looking, Tommy? Let's have a look at the scores. Uh, I tell you what, right? The Fleming round, and it usually is, it must be said, the Fleming round is usually the one that scores the lowest in historically. And that is the same with this year, it must be said. Um, so this round hasn't changed a lot of positions. That's all I'll say. Okey doke. So round number nine, penultimate round, everybody. Okay. Round number nine is the music round. So we've had ten questions right. from John Williams. He's he submitted all of these. Um, so here we go. When you're ready, Chris. Okay. Question number one of the music round: When Lucia Sciarra returns to her villa after her late husband's funeral, she puts on a record. What song does she play? You get a bonus point if you can name the composer. So chance of two points for this one. When Lucia Schiara returns to her villa, she puts on a record. What is the name of the song and who composed the music? You get a point for each. It wasn't Gangnam Style. That's what, <laughs> what a scene that would have been. <laughs> All right. All of those answers are in. Okay, good stuff. Question two. Question two. This is a, a good one. What was John Barry's personal favourite Bond score that he composed? So question two. What was John Barry's personal favourite Bond score? Okay, question number three. What was John Barry's least favourite score? Question number three. What was John Barry's least favourite score? Can we rephrase that as the least favourite score that he himself composed? Okay, question number four. How many vocal takes did John Barry eventually use to create the final cut of You Only Live Twice? So famously, they made a lot of vocal takes for Nancy Sinatra there. How many takes were there that he had to cobble together to get the final cut? Are we doing, uh, with a number like that, Chris, are we doing a, a range thing? Yeah, okay. So spot on the money, we'll get a point. I think if you get within, what, three either side? Five, okay. either, yeah, yeah. Three, three either side, then you get a half mark. I think that's right. fair enough. All the answers are in. Over yep. to you, mate. Okay, question five. Jack Lugo asks, what make and model guitar did Vic Flick use to record the James Bond theme? These are all JW's questions. Oh, sorry. Way, so, no, they yeah, are JW. No big yeah. Tom, actually, interestingly, would you have known this one, the answer to this one? I, I did know this yeah. only because I watched a video recently where Vic Flick auctioned, like, sold a oh, guitar yes, to somebody and right. that came up in the, in the thing. So what make and model guitar did Vic Flick use to record the James Bond theme? Three and a half point for make, half point for model. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's yeah. quite a long one, so yeah. yeah. Or no, just give him a point for each, shall we, Tom? Because it is a tr it's a tricky one. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll go point for each. So if you get the make point, if you get the model, yeah, point as well. All right, we are just waiting for an answer from Linda Zoot. There it is. Okay. Okay. There Question six: What is John Barry's last name? It's not Barry. 
<laughs> and it's not Barry. What is John it's Barry's? News to me. <laughs> yeah. What is John Barry's last name? Okay, all those answers are in. Question number seven. What is just as bad as listening to the Beatles without earmuffs? We've got to have a little bit of... I think if you're bang on the money, you get the full mark. If you're, if you're almost there, you get a half mark. So... If the 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 bang on answer features uh, some numbers, are you thinking the yeah yeah? But if you just say generally what that is, is that a yeah. half mark? Yeah yeah. Okay, all right. So let me just top those up. Okay, so if you get it bang on the money, full mark. If you get the gist, maybe you don't get the numbers quite right or something like that, then you get half a mark. Okay, so boom, boom. All right, cool. Uh, question number eight. In which Bond film was John Barry's former home featured? In which Bond film was John Barry's former home featured? A location that Tom and my good self might have ventured to at one point in time. Which I think that was the house that he wrote Goldfinger in, wasn't it, when it, Michael it, Caine was telling the story? That's that was indeed, that house. yeah. Was oh, that shit, house. that's crazy. I know. Okay, answers are in. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. Lovely. Okay, on two more questions for the music round. Question nine. Who sings Dirty Love? Dirty, dirty love. So oh, that beautiful. question is. I don't who, care who did sing it. I think you should sing it. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I really, really don't. <laughs> who sings Dirty Love? That episode was too long ago, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Mighty ho. All those answers are in. Okay. Final question of the music round. I think this is one that you all will probably get, hopefully. Question 10. What nationality is aha? <laughs> what nationality <laughs> aha not south korean no um yeah what nationality is aha there we go is- all right so that's the music round in the bag so let's circle around and do the answers chris okay so question one let's just have a quick look for the music round was Where's my music round? Here we go. Okay, so Lucia Sciarra, when she visits her villa, uh, she puts on a record. So we get a, a choice of two potential marks here. What was the name of the song and what was the name of the composer? The song was Nisi Dominus by Vivaldi. So well done to anyone who got either of those. Fantastic. Question two, what was John Barry's personal favourite score? It was Goldfinger. Question number three, what was John Barry's least favourite score? It was, of course, The Man with the Golden Gun. Question number four, how many vocal takes did John Barry eventually use to create the final vocal take of You Only Live Twice? It was, of course, 25. That is a lot of editing in there. That was a long day. Yeah, (laughs) long day in the studio there. Question five, what make and model guitar did Vic Flick use to record the James Bond theme? It was a Clifford Essex Paragon Deluxe. Which yeah, I was I'd, close. I'd, ne- I'd never even heard of that <laughs> no. until I watched that thing. Yeah, tricky one. Uh, now this is yeah, this is an interesting one. Question six: What is John Barry's last name? It is Prendergast. John, <laughs> is it John Barry Prendergast? It is. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, you if you it. Google him, that's you know, yeah. that's his full name. Uh, question number seven uh, was: What is just as bad as listening to the Beatles without earmuffs? It was, of course, drinking Dom Perignon fifty-three above the temperature of thirty-eight degrees Fahrenheit. So, if you got that bang on, full mark. If you got drinking champagne that was a bit warm or whatever, you get half a mark. <laughs> <laughs> We're generous today, man. We are generous yeah. today. <laughs> uh, question number eight: In which Bond film was John Barry's former home featured? It was, of course, Skyfall. 
Lovely. And question nine, who sings Dirty Love? It was Tim Feehan. Tim Feehan. Tim Feehan, absolutely. Question 10, what nationality is AHA? They are, of course, Norwegian. Norwegian. All right, there we go. Um, final round then, everybody. Now, yeah, this is going to be a little it. bit different. It's all this to play for. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna have a little look through the scores, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna top them up. Now you know what, Tom. Do you think this sound round should, instead of a point each, they should be two points each? Well, maybe. Why are you saying that? Talk to me. Just because I like the. I like the idea that if someone's a little bit behind, they might be able to pull it back, getting a few of these right, and it, and it just adds. It just it. If there's a bit, I don't know, if everyone's level, then I suppose it doesn't matter. But if there's a bit of discrepancy, what? I think giving double marks to this round could be could be worth doing. Well, I'll tell you what, let me let me just top up the marks so far and then see how, see where we're at. Okay, so one, so Chris, if you sing a song or something. Dirty, dirty love. <laughs> da, 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 da. Dirty love. Dirty love. Dirty, dirty love. Have you finished yet, Tom? I'm, so I'm loving that. <laughs> Come on, Way man. They're the much. only words I know. <laughs> Dirty uh, okay. Oh, hey, do you know what? I th- ooh, I tell ooh. you what. Ooh, is oh. it close? How are we looking? It is, actually. Hold on. Let me just do that. Anyone else want to go with Dirty Love? Hey, love! <laughs> <laughs> do you know what, right? <laughs> It's close. Really? Yeah, oh. man. So I, 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 let me just have a look at this in a second. Right. Let's have a think then. Let's it's have a think. close. I would, I, yeah, let's go double marks because okay. I, I think, it, it, yeah, let's go double marks, but okay. it's close. Let's just do that for a bit of fun. Okay. This is the sound round, everybody. Now, I'm going to play each sound clip three times. Okay. Now, essentially what it is, these are very short clips. And the first half of the round is the gadget round. And we're going to play a sound of a Bondian gadget that is used in the films. And you've got to tell us what gadget that is. Okay. First half, gadgets. The second half is the deaths of Bond. So somebody's died. They scream. Who is it? And we're going to play you that clip. Okay. These have There'll been- be five of each. Five These have been each. generously donated by a uh, friend of JBR, Rory Cooper. So they're, they're his, you can complain to him. <laughs> um, so I'll play each clip three times because they're quite short. And away we go. Okay. So let's get ready for number one. Here we go. Now, did you hear that? Okay. So I'm going to do that a bit louder this time. Number two. Okay, I'm going to do one more playthrough. Okay. So, yeah. Ryan sounding confident, aren't you, Ryan? I tell you what, he's he's nailed that one. That's good. Well done, Ryan. Okay, so that's two points for each right answer. We're just waiting on. Very good. Okay. Sound number two. Gadget number two is this one. Once again, that is gadget number two. And one last time. Okay, gadget number three is this one. Nice. So now there are some clues in that clip. Yeah. Oh. Okay, one last listen. Listen deep. Maybe let's look out for some clues in the background now. Hey, 
yeah, it was a little quiet. These are not easy, are they? Not easy, these ones. That is a that is a tough one. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you know it, you can see the scene in your mind. But you know, all right, good stuff. Gadget number four is this one. Okay, once again, I, I don't know if that four. came. It sounded a bit How distorted. That on Tommy. Okay, I'll try again. How was that? Yeah, it's a very short clip, actually. But, it um, is very short. I think that one might have might have needed a couple more seconds longer. I think that it one. might have done too, actually. Yeah. That was a, that was a very tricky one for that length of time. I think I think okay. the others have all had little hints in them, but that one was very yeah. tricky for that That's length of time. One. Okay, final gadget then is this one. Okay, another tricky one. I'm going to play it for you again. Once again, there's a little hint in the score there yeah, that might yeah. tip you off. They are tricky. They are tricky. Those last two are very tricky. Okay, I'm just waiting. Do you know what I think? I think everyone will find the deaths easier than yes, the gadgets. I do. So, well. so if oh, you're I don't feeling, think they can if, be any harder. <laughs> no, I think if you're feeling <laughs> tough now, I think the deaths will be a lot easier. Okay. All right. Second half of the round, then the deaths of Bond. Okay, here we go. Here's death scream number one. Can you tell me who it is? <laughs> Once again, for two points, who is dying here? One more listen for good measure. Help his name. If you can't remember the name, but you know who you think it is. Write down the sort of scene and the and the thing, and you might get a half mark if you, if you don't yeah. know the actual. Well, name. these are these are all for two marks. So if you oh, get these the are all for two marks. Yeah, sorry. Two. If you get the bloke that does this, like that kind of answer, then then you get one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So is. Oh no. Okay. Boom! 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 Okay. Scream number two is this one. Yeah, that's a good one. That is yeah. a good one. I like that one. Once again. And one more time. Very nice. Okay. I'd say that's probably the, the one that's most gettable, I would say. Mm. Okay, so we got one. Okay. Boom. Okay. Death scream number three is this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and just just to just to be certain, it's not the same scream each time. There are different ones. So this is a All good right. one. Let's listen to this one again. Death scream number three is this one. <laughs> okay, final playthrough of Death Scream number three. All right, that's everybody in. Yeah, okay. Penultimate question. 
in the 2020 JBR Boxing Day quiz. Stream number four. Can you tell me who is this? That's a short Once one. Again, that is a short one. One more playthrough. And there you have it. That's death stream number four. I'll give you a clue. It's definitely a film you've all seen. <laughs> Thanks, and, Tom. And, <laughs> and each uh, each death and each um, gadget are all from a different Bond film. So in any crossovers. All right. Okay, final question then. The Very quiz final question. question of the James Bond Radio Boxing Day bumper quiz. This could be the all-important one. This could be what makes you champion of the JVR Boxing Day quiz. So here we go, ready? Here it comes. <laughs> Once again. <sighs> Final time, here we go. I think we must ask Rory to edit them a bit longer next time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a very, very tricky round. Very tricky round, that one. A little clue for you. That that person has come up once before in the quiz so far. That's a good clue, that one. Okay, I think we're just waiting for Hunter. Okay, I'm going to stop the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, there we have it. That's 100 questions all done. All right, so answers for the sound round are as follows. Uh, question number one, gadget number one, was this one. And that was, of course, the Sharper Image credit card from the view to a kid. <laughs> no shit, I got that right. <laughs> Very nice. It, was, it, was, it, wasn't the, it was the bird that, that tipped me off for that one. Uh, okay, no, there yeah. are clues, aren't there? There's, surprisingly, there are some little clues dotted around in there that you can... Uh, you can pick up on. Gadget number two was this one. And that was, of course, the Polaroid camera from License to Kill with the laser. Oh, of course. Yep. Okay. Then gadget number three was this one. You're going to kick yourself. That was, of course, the camera from Honor Majesties when he's taking the shots of all the girls on the, on the screen at the end. And you can hear the helicopters in the background. Oh, I thought yeah. that was a train. There you go. Gadget number four. Which this, was this one was one. hard. I think this, this one needed to be one. longer. That was, of course, the acid pen from Octopus. Hmm. There, there was a hint of score behind it, it, it was behind it, but it needed a bit longer, that one. I think that was very there hard. It is. Okay. Gadget number five was this one. I'm going to play that one again because that's a very short one. Here it is again, number five. That is Bond's phone in Tomorrow Never Dies. Okay, as it's been put here, the Ericsson JB988 phone aerial key in Tomorrow Never Dies. <laughs> number six, we're into the death screams of oh, Bond here we now. Go. So this was scream <laughs> number one. <laughs> <laughs> and if I was to say, what a helpful chap, maybe that would give you a little clue. It was, of course, Sandor from Spy Love Me. Oh. Uh, next one, death stream number two, is this one. Once again, because that's a short one. Hunter's that looking is confident for this one. Yep. Apostis from For Your Eyes Only, falling off from St. Cyril's at the top there. Nicely done. Next up, death scream number three is... 
once again. <laughs> that is Kish from Goldfinger. And I'm right in thinking he's the dude that gets squashed by the vault door, isn't he? Yeah, guy? but this is when um, our job chucks him over the over the top rail and he falls down. Right. That's him. Oh, That's him. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not just before him. he was going to try and escape, but then the vault door locks and then Odd Job chucks him over. The guy that's like, don't be a hero. Anyway, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Odd Job doesn't care. All right. Cool. Next up then, scream number four was this one. Ah! Once again. Ah! And that was Alex Trevelyan at the end of Golden Eye. And then finally, scream number five was this one. Once again. And that was, of course, 004 in The Living Daylights. So I'm going to go back and do some counting, and then we'll announce the winner in reverse order, okay? So third place, second place, first place, and so on. So bear with me for a moment. And while Tom's doing that, like on behalf of both of us, we'd just like to say like thank you to all three of you for applying because it's not easy. I can imagine like sitting the other side of a hundred questions, most of which which are absolutely killer and 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 airing it to the Bond fan community. That's not an easy thing to do. So fair play to all three of you because it takes a lot of you know a lot of balls or a lot of thrusos as the Greeks call. <laughs> <laughs> It's all about the cock and balls. So <laughs> yeah. this, has been, this has been fantastic. And I wanted to tell you guys how much enjoyment your show has brought to my life over the years. So thank you for, for oh, hosting. That's, re- that's um, great. Really appreciate that. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. This, this has certainly been an interesting one. Okay, so while Tom's adding up, what would you say out of them all have been your favorite round? So, Linda, I'll start with you. What has been your favorite round today at the quizzes? It could be a round that you think that you scored really high on, or it could be a round that was just kind of a, quite exciting or different. What would you say has been your favorite round? I would say this last round with the sounds. I think that's been my favorite round because it's definitely been one of the trickiest rounds, but it's also incredibly funny <laughs> to hear all the, all the screams one after another because um, they all start, so, they all start sounding similar after all. I would yeah. say this one's, this one's, it's, it's, it's a hell of a round, but it's been my favorite. Excellent. Okay. And Hunter, what about you? What's been your favorite round? I, I probably did best on the lazy and um, I've kind of kicking myself in the pants for this last round because I guess the first one, and then when I hear the next one, it's like, Oh no, I know what that one is. And it's what I, that's what I guess for the last one. So, <laughs> Yeah, it's a tough. It is tough. Oh so yeah, you, but what would you say then, Lazenby or um, yeah, probably Chasen? probably Lazenby? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Ryan, what about you? What's been your favorite round today? You know, I really enjoyed the Roger round. I it brought back a lot of uh, emotion. I could almost hear his voice, you know, in my head as we were going through the questions, and it made me a little emotional there for a minute oh, to think about it. That's a beautiful uh, moment. I, I like the Roger round. Nice. How are we doing, oh, Tom? All right, everybody. The schools are in. Oof. Okay. Oh, I know who won this. Okay. So here we go. Now, what I will say before I start knocking out these numbers is every single one of you had a period where you were gunning on all cylinders and were knocking them out of the park. And you also had a period where you were doing the exact opposite. Okay. Right. And, <laughs> yep, right. and, Throughout the whole thing, even down to that final round, it was all to play for. Any one of you could have won that in the last Uh round there. So it was very close. And looking through the scores, which I will send you all afterwards so you can see what you got in each round, um, there are are definite areas where some of you absolutely knocked it out of the park, like Timmy and Pierce. Those were particularly strong rounds for everybody. Um, and then there are weaker rounds like the Fleming round, things like that. The music round wasn't particularly particularly wow. strong. Uh, so it's an interesting result. <laughs> but like Chris said, well done to all of you for being brave enough for joining us on this because, you know, potentially humiliating yourselves publicly like this in front of thousands of people is a is a is a big is a big move so we salute every single one of you for for taking part this year. Thank so, you. are we ready to announce the uh, the third place? Here we go. In third place in the 2020 Boxing Day JBR Bonanza Quiz is Commander Linda Zhu with 30 Ooh, well points. Well done, Linda. Okay, good stuff. In second place with 36.5 
is Commander <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Capassi, which means our champion this year is Commander Hunter Brining oh. with 38.5. All right. Well, well done, done, you, Hunter. buddy. Brilliant yeah. stuff. I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> there you go. Now, look at that, man. Look at those scores. That 30 so from Linda, close. 36 and a half from Ryan, 38 and a half from Hunter there. Now, that is, is That's the closest close, we've it? ever had, I think. Yeah. I think it? it is. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a champion's wall to the website, and we're going to put Marlena's name up on there for last year, and then Hunter's name will be on the wall for this year as well, like the wall at MI6 from Spectre. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it will be champions rather than fallen spies. But there you go. So how does it feel to be the winner this year, Hunter? Uh, honestly, I don't believe it. I feel like I was doing pretty terrible through all those. If you can see through my answers, I have a question mark next to probably a good 50% of my answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you pulled it through, man. It was it was good. I tell you what, your, let me see what your strongest round was. Your strongest round was... Probably rounds, be. rounds four and... Uh, round five. So what was round five? Let me just look, that, look what round five was. Uh, so it's... Marlena's round, Sean. Oh, sorry, no, Mister George. Yeah. Would have been Roger, Tim. 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 Tim's really? round. You were huh. the strongest in, yeah. And then let's have a look uh, for Ryan. What was your strongest round? Ryan was also Timmy. Very nice. nice. And then Linda. Let's look at your strongest round. That was round number seven, which was. The Daniel round. Nice. Good How stuff. about that? There you go. This was a lot of fun, guys. Thank you. Thank you for uh, playing. Linda no worries, Hunter, man. you made great, uh, great contestants. Yeah, they absolutely. This, is, this has been a blast, guys. Definitely a great start to the Christmas season for sure. So how are you going to uh, go out and celebrate, Hunter? Are you going to be wary of all the autograph hunters as soon as you step out <laughs> your door now? Oh, 100%. No, I'm, I'm going to finish my drink and then head to the airport. <laughs> Nice. nice. Make sure you go undercover just in case. Of course. There it is. All right, then. So well done, you guys. Thanks again for joining us. And uh, we will see you soon, no doubt. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year and all that kind of stuff. And thank you again for joining us on the Boxing Day Quiz. Thank you. And here's hope to 2021. We actually get a Bond film. Fingers crossed. (laughs) Oh, now that was amazing well done congratulations to hunter like brilliant and i love the fact that it was so close between between yeah. all of them like the final scores and and i don't think either one of them thought confidently they definitely won but i but i think they all thought oh they might have had a chance and obviously they all did yeah and and hunter clearly didn't think that he was going to win but yeah fair play to all three of them because that, that was it. great Genuinely, going through those scores, there it was. It was all to play for in that final round. It was. It was all close. If somebody had had a, a particularly strong round that time, anyone, any one of the three could have uh, knocked it out at the end there. And so, I love how they each go. had sort of individual rounds where they were like absolutely acing it. That yeah. was really cool. Yeah, big time. Yeah. yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it, man? Because it's 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 so difficult. Some of those questions, and it's easy when you've when you've got something in mind. Like when you're composing questions and of course, you know, big thanks to Brian and Dan and Jack and JW and Rory and Marlena for all their questions. They all, obviously, we all submitted a few questions each to kind of fill out the hundred um, amongst the, you know, team JVR. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it's so easy to know things when you know them, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? And I it's know. like when you don't, it's just, and you sort of know them. Yeah. It's such a killer, man, because like Campbell, there was a good question there. They yeah. all knew he was called Campbell, but it's just yeah. like, is that name going to come through to your brain in the moment? Is the, it's, it's, it's is the, the time beast. pressure as well, yeah. though, isn't it? Like, I know we don't have a ticking clock, but there is, it, you, it, your brain suddenly kicks into panic mode when you know yeah. you've got to answer it. And, and yeah. like you often say, you get a bit of a brain fart. And it's and, yeah. and once you've gone down that road, it's very hard to, for it to suddenly come in, uh, yeah. like suddenly pop into your head again. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's tricky yeah. stuff. And I must say some of these rounds, like obviously the, the sound round, Rory's round was brilliant. Um, I do think some of those were very, very tricky indeed. Um, 
Very tricky indeed. And I, I know Jack is, is a master of, of the difficult Jack, question. I imagine Jack is listening to this at home, <laughs> sitting in a spiky chair with his feet up with a white pussycat on his lap, just <laughs> grinning to himself at what a devious master villain he was with his questions this year. I so, so I remember his were specific, specifically, particularly, that's the word I'm looking for, yeah. particularly devious last year as well. And so, specific, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a dark horse, that Jack Luger. That he is, definitely. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. All right, then. So that rounds out another year. JBL will be having a little bit of a winter's break after Christmas. So we will be back in March. So we'll have a bit of downtime through January and February. Um, hope everybody at home is having an all right time with you know the state of things at the yeah. moment. Tricky times, um, tricky times, tricky times indeed, man. So you know it's a it's a bugger, and the thing you got to keep in mind is that you know we will come out at the end of it eventually, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, you know. Still not sure whether we'll see Bond in April. I'm I'm guessing it's going to be probably April. Next, I I yeah. think April is a no. It's got to be a no go, isn't yeah. it? It's just not going to happen. Like I I think uh, if I'd be happy if actually to, if we actually get it at some point next year. Um, yeah, I I feel like it's got to be November next year. That's the yeah. only like to do it properly. It's there. I am trying to put a bit of positivity in everybody's <laughs> ears, and then immediately I'm like, nah. But yeah. I think the 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 way to do it is not like Wonder Woman did, mm. where it's like, oh, let's put it out on streaming straight away, and then let's have the uh, sort of a, a limited cinema release. I want it done properly, man. I yeah. don't want to bugger about, and it would be lovely if the timing falls into place to the point where the world gets off its knees and it, everybody's everything's all right again and everything goes back to normal the way it was and then the first big movie that comes out is bond you know what i mean that and would be that, yeah that, that would be immense that whether that could possibly happen or not who knows because it yeah. would all be down to luck really but you can imagine if what how you remember in the uk in particular when skyfall came out how the whole country got behind it because of the whole olympics thing there was such yeah. a a feeling of pride in great britain at that time because of the olympics bond coming out figurehead of that whole thing i'm convinced that was a big part of skyfall doing so well in the uk definitely yeah um yeah. and and all that you know imagine if it's bond that kind of sails us out of these dark waters all those cinemas are packed out, knocks out another billion quid at the box office. You know, that would that would be the dream. Whether yeah. it will or not, who knows? Who knows, yeah. you know? But we ain't getting that in April, that's for sure. No, but yeah. we have got like another 24 Bond films, potentially 25, if you want yeah. to count uh, another true. one to keep us going. We've got an extended JBR back catalogue to keep people yeah. going between now and our return. But yeah, I guess the main thing is stay safe, you know, everyone. There's hope. You know, next year ends up being a lot better than than it currently is with everything going on, which I'm sure it will. It's just yeah. it's just that time, isn't it? Um, yeah, but, absolutely. You know, yeah. yeah, and it's good to have you back on JBR as well, man. We've, oh, we've cheers. missed your little face. It's uh, always good. Yeah. It's good to be back, man. You were saying that, and we're just about to have a little break, but yeah. we've already got like a lot of decent episodes in the pipeline for when we come back. Obviously, the uh, Brian and I did the Watches of Bond Part 1. That so went we were down doing... very well, didn't it? A lot of people love the Watches. Yeah. That was, yeah, we had some, a really good response on that one. So we'll definitely be doing a Part 2. Obviously, we've got the music of Bonds coming back. I think you got Daylights next, haven't you? So yeah, we'll man. come back with that. And uh, yeah, and lots of other, lots of other cool You know what I was thinking as well is uh, the next episode we come back with will be episode 200. So Ooh. we'll have to... We'll That's got to be a good. banger then. Because I tell you what, we didn't do a, a birthday episode last year, I realised. Oh, just yeah. because of everything leading up, or this year I should say, leading up to No Time to Die was about to kick off. So it was all, we sort of just didn't really think about it. So we no. missed that. So maybe we need to come back with a, with a 200th birthday slash 7th birthday JBR celebration. That's Sounds been good nice. So maybe yeah. we do that. But uh, yeah, we'll be back in March with some shenanigans and uh, some bonding fun. And uh, yeah, I'll give you a couple of months to play with all your toys. And then uh, and then we'll be back. <laughs> It'd be good to actually, like, um, it's always nice to hear uh, on the Facebook page and the Twitters and everything, what, every, what sort of Bond stuff everyone's got. So yeah. anyone that's got some, lucky enough to get some Bond stuff over Christmas, send your pictures in. We want to see photos of you reading, playing, using, wearing, whatever it might be, because um, yeah. that's always good to see, isn't it? Absolutely. And let us know your score of the, of the quiz as well. I want to see how you did. Definitely. Yeah. Now, we haven't got any rankings, have we? Have we got rankings? We didn't you know, do we that normally this say year, zero we? to 10 is, yeah, is, yeah. is 
Sheriff J.W. Pepper, 11 to 20 is knick-knack all the way up to like uh, elite yeah. service. So so are we going to do it or are we just going to say... I tell, well, I'll tell you what, because we've completely forgotten about it until <laughs> the last we... second of the episode. <laughs> Sorry, so I'll tell everyone. you what, we'll take the, one, the last one of those we did and I will yeah. post it on the episode page. Okay. For everybody to see. So brilliant. Yeah, while yeah. we don't have that to hand right now, then yeah. you, know, you can do that yourself on the, yeah. on the website and stuff. Let us know how you go on. Beautiful. All right. Well, happy Christmas happy. and happy new year to you, Chris. And likewise, my brother from and another to mother. The JBR family at large. We will hopefully see you in the new year with some JBR meetups in the flesh and you know, life getting back to somewhat normal. Yeah. And uh, we will see you in 2021, everybody. We'll see Bye. you then. Bye. Hope you enjoyed the show. Good night.